Okay, and so this is the intro music for Amazing Nini Fritz, but also goes with the nickname Nini Quarantini. H what happened there? You were in a quarantine too long? <laughs> I think COVID happened. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, it started like when you were in quarantine and you were just bored and like, I'm going to call myself Quarantini. Yeah, literally. I was in a, co a quarantine hotel in Bali mm. and that's when it came up and it's probably the best thing that ever came out of quarantine <laughs> and that's your now that's that's your instagram name now yeah, yeah i do have a problem when this whole thing is over i'm like i'm losing my identity i, I was just about to say what are you gonna do after <laughs> yeah. after the i don't know nini no more quarantini <laughs> but that's only funny for people who knew um you know my past life as nini i think quarantini. that would be very original <laughs> if you keep that i mean if we need a new pandemic for a new name whatever nini martini nini bikini Maybe I turn into a yogi and then I'm Nini Kundalini or a lot of things you I can I think do. there are a lot of things rhyme with uh, Nini. Yeah, you know? I think you're going to be fine. <laughs> uh, well, listen, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. I feel very honored. I have to say, I was waiting for that confession until we're on. But since you told me about that podcast first thing that pop into my mind is like one day i want to be guest on his podcast and i <laughs> hope i qualify and here we are one year later i got these cool headphones on talking to the mic and i made it taking off the list if <laughs> if you think this is you made it like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this I is the stuff we're gonna look back on in like 10 years and be like you remember go. that day we're sitting in this little studio in bali and now you're giving ted talks and i'm yeah, I, I think <laughs> for you people to know, this is not a studio. This is just my room. Shush. <laughs> Shush. It's very cool. <laughs> so Nini, she is just a fantastic one person who every time I see her, she always smiles and always brings that crazy cool energy. Mm -hmm. And um, so on your Instagram account also, like you have these uh, three three things with you, the, the bucket, bucket lister. Yeah which I think is really cool. Everyone should have a bucket list and, and do things. And then there's other thing is iConnect, uh, which is your little business. Uh, yes. If you can just raise it up, I think like, uh, it's right there. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on the screen. <laughs> um, and then what is the, and the pancake enthusiast, all those three things are on the same level? Uh, pretty much. Like bucket list and iConnector is luckily how I can make a living by now. I'm still trying to find a way to monetize my pancake passion, but um. Yeah, I see some potential there. <laughs> Are you making money with doing, you ticking off your bucket list? Uh, by inspiring other people to create their bucket list and take action. And that is inspired by me oh, okay. living my own bucket list. Yeah. yeah, I don't know anything about that. Oh, we'll come to that later. <laughs> um, so as an entrepreneur, um, you being in, oh, that I remember you told me this, this story last year and I'm very interested to, to so other people can learn about yeah. it. How did iConnect happen? So we can just go straight away to that. Yeah, okay, all right, here we go. <laughs> just wait, pew, 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 pew. Need to stretch. Is that you're having? No, wait. Boop, boop. Yeah, so we can't wait. So iConnect, uh, oh no, no. Oh for this God, one is that. best thing. Nini's gonna talk about iConnect right Ooh, in now. In your dreams. <laughs> it's the coolest thing I've ever seen in a podcast. Like this machine that makes fake laughs, so I feel like someone's actually laughing at my jokes. <laughs> this is how I entertain myself. Myself. I, I, I train my jokes for, for stand up and just I just go. say, this how you practice your stand up. Oh, no, no that's problem. Not <laughs> Hope better not. <laughs> Standing ovation. <laughs> okay, I connect. I connect. Stronger than Wi Fi. Woo, cheesy tagline. Um, yeah. Do -do. Yeah, that deserves a <laughs> drum. So, huh, where do we even start? I think back, back in the days when I was in Bali for the first time in 2016. I observed a social phenomenon, and that was uh, sitting in restaurants and cafes, looking at couples, looking at their phones instead of talking to each other. Oh, I thought you were going to make a... I like need a to go a little bit lower down because you're so close to the microphone. I told you, fist, fist okay. away. Maybe I'm just so excited. <laughs> you already started making out with it. No, no, it's fine. Fist away is fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't go too Shoot. far. <laughs> All right. So, um, I observed that people... Are uh, especially couples were just uh, getting exposed to the entertainment going on on their smartphone instead mm -hmm. of talking to each other. 
And it really upset me. I was like, there was a day in your life when you thought this person was the most interesting person in the world. And mm. hopefully that's the reason you dated and not just because of looks. Um, and now you're sitting there having absolutely nothing to talk about while you're in this paradise island, like sharing a vacation together. And uh, yeah, so um, I observed that. And then I did study communication in my master's and actually needed a, a theme for my final master thesis. And I didn't know there was a word for it, but it turned out this effect is called fubbing, phone snubbing. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. basically ignoring the presence of the offline person um, because you're so engaged with your phone. And um, then I researched that effect and um, yeah, just analyzed all the psychological um, reasons why people are doing it, how it affects like uh, intimacy, bonding, quality of relationships. And I really found out how detrimental it is to like our human connections mm-hmm. and um, yeah, how basically touch screens make us lose touch because we're so busy keeping up to date with um, people's online life and we have like FOMO in the off- online world that we basically miss out on the offline world. Like we barely look up from our screens. We barely like make a human connection, make someone a genuine compliment. But in social media, we're great at like spreading lights to people we've never talked to, like sliding into people's DMs. And hashtag relationships, hashtag love. Couple hashtag goals and all of that. But like couple goals only exist for the picture. And once the picture Sitting is Sitting alone in your room, couple goals. Yeah, no fun. You're scrolling through your screen together, but that's not romantic. Um, so yeah, so then I actually um, like handed in my thesis, I passed, and I went uh, backpacking in. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, I went backpacking in Nicaragua, and ironically, my phone got stolen on my third day. So I had to take my theory into practice and did the whole trip offline. And I have to say, it was like one of the best things that could have happened to me was losing my phone. Because I actually finally depended on people instead of technology. I was talking to like strangers in the bus, like um, walking into a hostel, just asking if they're free instead of booking something on booking.com or check reviews. And um, yeah, talk to people in the in the lobby instead of just connecting to Wi-Fi and sending pictures to, which is also important to family mm-hmm, and friends mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. I just felt I was much more present and um, I really enjoyed it so um, yeah I came back home and I was like mm, maybe my thesis is way too important to be drawn in dust on my bookshelf and just to you know just to have the only purpose is getting me my master's degree um, and the second thing I observed while I was traveling is that there's so many interesting people who did like so many cool things in their lives But mostly we just end up having small talk because it's, you know, like, where are you from? How long have you been traveling? And I was at one point, it just gets a bit tiring and boring and you just want to put like a sticker on your forehead Mm. being like, hi, my name is Nini. I've been traveling since whatever. Mm -hmm. Like a T-shirt or something. Yeah, it's like it's like a little little sign when when the child is lost, like this is mother's phone number kind of thing. This is where you return it back. But this is like the things what are you talking about? Like I'm keep nodding because that is just huge. And I remember last year, I don't know, it wasn't like maybe two years ago, I was hanging out with my very good friend. He's a stuntman from Australia. So both of us, we had uh, dinner in this nice uh, Italian restaurant. Mm-hmm. And I could not believe that th- there's this family, mom and dad and two daughters. Yeah. Everyone on their phones. So sad. Everyone. And yeah. then at some point, like I think father was like kind of trying to start conversation or something. And the girls were just like... You know, I had this like bitch face, like kind of like, uh, I'm like busy. Don't interrupt As my I, scrolling. Like my, sc- it's and it was, I was, uh, and I, I said to to Mike, like, look at this. Yeah. But in the same time, what I what I think, uh, anything anything is good in moderation. Like, yeah. and I think social media has so many good things about it. Okay. Our phones are amazing things. Like, you know, anything what we can get from it's fantastic. But it's about figuring out that, mo- uh, you know, being moderate with it. Like, okay, so I need to find this, find this. I, yeah. I need to connect with some people. And when someone says like, yeah, social media is evil, it's like, I think in the same time, social media can be amazing. But that what you got on there and you started mm-hmm. master thesis and you thought about this concept and then how often, like I have, I've done my master's and then my, uh, also my uh, bachelor degree. And I was like, my bachelor's was about quality management and master's, mm-hmm. I don't even remember about it anymore. And, and you, instead of just, as you said, just put in a shelf like and get covered, gets covered with the dust, you created something amazing. So mm-hmm. that is, that is just 
fantastic thank you like uh, quickly on what you just said um i agree like i don't uh, praise to you know live a life off the grid and go back to your nokia 3310 days i do think there's a lot of relevance and importance in social media in our phones but um i always put it as kind of like junk food and super food mm, mm. so if you just consume and like just scrolling 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 and compare your, your life to other people's life and it's putting you down and mm. it's not really creating anything um, then it's like uh, it's not adding any value to your life but if you use it as like superfood in terms of you know staying connected with people who live across the world and by just by sharing a story they kind of know what's going on in your life and you feel more connected you can FaceTime you can meditate with your with your phone you can track your run and fantastic put a soundtrack to your life by li listening to spotify i consider all of that as like superfood but it's all like in balance and there's mm -hmm. a time and a place for your phone but it's not when you're like having a one hour catch up with a friend yeah you know? 100 like and then also i remember a lot to again last year two years ago i was in vietnam and i met this girl really cute girl and she she was like this super influencer right yeah. And uh, I was trying to hang out with her, but every five minutes she would do the story. Yeah. Like, I need to do a story about this. I need to do a story about this. So this is the story. Yeah. It's like, what, like... Snap it or it didn't happen. Like, if we <laughs> eventually end up yeah. making out and having sex or whatever, are you going to have a story? Like, mm. oh, otherwise no one is going to believe it. <laughs> it's, it's insane. And it felt sad. It felt like someone has this nasty virus and they can't get yep. rid of it. It's like, it's like you know, the aliens, uh, the film where that thing just falls in your face and then, then <laughs> afterwards gets in and, like, laid eggs and this thing shoots out. And and you can't get rid of it it's just it feels like that yeah. and actually someone posted uh, a photo and i'm gonna show it in this magic later <laughs> and then there's a phone uh iphone on your face and the things around are like from the alien film wow and it just like no sticks to it yeah, yeah. yeah and doesn't allow you to take it off yeah, yeah. yeah that's how it feels yeah. like it's like exactly. we live our life through our phones and it's exactly crazy. and it's interesting how also like with people like who do become very addictive who do get influenced in kind of a shitty way but yeah. how do you figure out who is going to go the that path or this path and it just like with all the shitty foods with all the drugs and yeah. you know if you smoke weed once in a while i think it's fine you know just to chill if you smoke weed every night maybe not that good yeah. and that's the same thing with it with everything and it's uh, it's quite crazy all in moderation don't yeah. use drugs kids so how did you <laughs> how did you oh before <laughs> before i want to say this one it's like when nini uh we, we, me and nini we went to uh gili islands uh for the nepi which is a silent day here in in the bali so everyone is just sit at home do nothing but our friends said like let's go to gili's because they don't celebrate it celebrate <laughs> not doing anything uh but we were actually went for a festival it was fun and Nini decided for some reason she's gonna put her phone in a freezer <laughs> And then, <laughs> yeah, that Thank was, you, that, uh, that was, a round but, of but afterwards, <laughs> no, which is, uh, this one happened in the morning because she took that fucking phone out and it was frozen. It didn't work. And then you put it in the rice and it was fine. Is it fine now? It was fine. Yeah. Was fine actually, then. I think it still worked. It was just not charging. So that made me believe. Um, okay. So maybe that's a story I tell myself at least. <laughs> but it's fine now. It's fine now. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like to be fair, I had to um, fix it two times already in the same month because it had a water damage, and oh, I was okay. like, "Well." And now you have a freezer free. freezer damage. <laughs> 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 you bring to the same <laughs> shop, Nene. What happened now? Well. I decided to put it in the freezer. Do I get a discount now? <laughs> <laughs> I get some frozen chips with it. Wow. And um, so that you, th 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 oh, that was for you kind of thing to say, like, I'm going to leave it away. Just going to have enjoy myself. Yeah. And we had a fantastic night dancing. It was amazing. amazing. Remember yeah. the, the ocean smack smashing? <laughs> it was that insane. Mexican wave for every wave. The wave and the lightning. Fantastic. I think the lightning was the craziest one mm. because it was a certain times when the, the music and the beat dropped at the same time <laughs> with the lightning. Um, uh, like a scene out of uh, any movie. It's yeah. Like lightning, waves, crashing, dancing, music. It's fantastic. It was incre like really incredible. And, and drugs did help as well. <laughs> 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 don't <laughs> do en that. Enhance <laughs> it, but don't do drugs. <laughs> and no one says that Pina I have colada. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, let's go back to iConnect. And how did you kind of <sighs> came up with the idea that that can be a viable thing and you can actually you know make profit yep. of, uh, of it or just an idea in the beginning yeah um so <coughs> i'm speaking up here um yes yeah, so i came back from my travels and i figured out like it's way too important to just um you know serve as my thesis 
And also I observed is like uh, rep repetitive small talk. And I was like, wow, well, why don't I just put like one on one together? And um, yeah, I did a few um, speeches, like talks. It's like we work Amsterdam and blah about my thesis. But at one point I was like, mm, now people know about it. And I'm crea creating some awareness of being more mindful of our technology use and have more human connections. But at one point I was like, it's actually not my thing to just talk about the problem mm -hmm. without having a solution. Like, um, thanks to the nice intro music you put on. <laughs> like one, oh, I, I, I just like to focus on the sunny side and, you know, not just talking about all this negativity. Um, so I'm like, yeah, I just have to find a, a solution for that and basically just find a way to make um, people more interesting than social media. So there's less temptation to use your phone because the person sitting in front of you is more interesting. And What happens if it's not more interesting? <laughs> Then you just pick another <laughs> question or you just got to get out of this uh, conversation. And <laughs> But that's a, such a good point as well. Like, so it's rather concentrating this person who is just so interesting. I met people who are not fucking mm. interesting and I really think that I, I can get more value from my all phone. all the questions, yeah? Okay. And it's, it's bad though. But then you know, you know, at least you've tried. It's like you've done everything, absolutely anything to make it work and juice, um, squeeze the juice out of that person. Mm. If that person is still not interesting, yeah. he or she... Or There's the phone. Is not <laughs> yet, right? There's the then alien, alien phone <laughs> in my face. <laughs> then you know, then it's better to just... Did you see that uh, in South Park they do the Buddha box. No, what is There's that? There's this basically Cartman came up with this concept that uh, he has this anxiety that uh, people talk to him while he's on the phone and doing his thing. Yeah. I'm gonna put this again so for people <laughs> to see the reference. And then he came up with this idea that you just put a carbon box around your head and yeah. he called it a Buddha box. So no one can talk to him and no one can interrupt his scrolling. His scrolling. And then all of a sudden the entire South Park was wearing those Buddha boxes. So no one was talking <laughs> so to each other. Yeah, so the wife is sitting and the kids are crying and wife and husband are just sitting with the Buddha boxes. <laughs> Okay, definitely. That's definitely some food for thought and uh, promoting eye connect. Um, but circling back to yeah, yeah, how yeah. it came together. All right, so um, I had enough about, like, I still like to talk about the problem, but I now have a solution for mm. it. Um, and that's when I thought, all right, I just need to make people more interesting in social media. How do I do that? by asking better questions. Mm -hmm. So I think nobody likes small talk. That's why we kind of avoid like these networking events and people have this social anxiety because they're like, oh shit, I don't know what to say. And that might make me feel awkward. Small talk makes me like sometimes irritated so yeah. bad, especially when they, the, the second question, where are you from? Yeah. And that pisses me off. And the reason is because the UK- No gave one knows Latvia. No, that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah, that's true. But the other thing is also like we got uh, got stuck in a box and saying like Eastern Europe, you're mm. Russian, you're all okay. that, you're all that, and, and people come with the stereotypes. And I'm pretty sure like if you, as a German, like people come got with the stereotypes same. there as well. We're not funny. No, but the thing is, I don't <laughs> mind when though. I don't mind when people ask me where I'm from, but not yeah. as a first or second yeah. question. Yeah. You know, just to have there any there's anything yeah. to talk about. And then when I kind of get a little bit annoyed and I say, listen, I'm from Planet Earth. You know, I'm what's an like there's so many other th questions to ask, and, like, oh, and they get offended. They're like, yeah. "Oh, why? Why are you so rude?" I'm just yeah. like, this, "I think it's rude when you ask me the se se second thing is where I'm from." You know, but um, it's almost like labeling someone's exactly. identity. Yeah, there's so many things. If yeah. I meet you for the first time, I could say like, "Oh my God, look at your dress. Yeah. Look at your hair. Like, yeah. uh, what do you, what do you did today? What what yeah. kind of food did you eat? Oh, you yeah. eat vegan, or you try to be vegan, you pretend to be <laughs> vegan. <laughs> Whatever the money. diets you have, there's yeah. so many things to talk yeah. about. And then eventually, obviously, like, um, oh, so I was wondering where you're from, by yeah. the way. You know, yeah. instead of oh German, so you like schnitzel and you drink <laughs> a lot of beer and you all dance and uh, you know <laughs> like, exactly that's what we're doing all day. <laughs> Um, yeah, but I agree. But I think it's not like it doesn't come with any bad intention. It's like people like intentionally trying to label someone. It's just like they don't have any better questions. There should to be in a school of subject, small yeah. talk subject. Honestly, there's so many. One of the iConnect questions is like, what do you think is a subject that we should be taught at school? And I think, you know, having proper communication, like mm. quality conversations, um, positivity, talk about feelings, talk about all those things, emotions, yeah. like that should be taught in, in school. But I'm sidetracking. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We sidetracking. Um, it's totally fine. Um, and, and yeah, so you said about how well, that point where, well, 
if the person is not interesting, give them a chance yeah. and then there's no chance. Okay. So, but then you came up with all these cool questions and that's awesome. Like, then you would be like, you talk to someone, ah, it doesn't go anywhere. And you just like, boom. And look what's what I your got. favorite ice cream flavor? <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite color? That's like, the it's, fuck? it's just, yeah, but I think, um, you know, it's a bit weird when those questions just come out of the blue, like out mm. of nothing. You just sit there and like silence and then you're like, Hey. <laughs> hey, what's up? I need to pull out the card. Do you want to play this game? What's the best <laughs> thing you've eaten this week? <laughs> like, um, it's a cool question, but um, I think it makes it more natural if you actually have this question yeah. there. When was the last time you had a massive diarrhea? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because you, cause you have, uh, like, your dad was helping you with some questions as well. Because we played last time, and you said, like, my dad came up with this one. Can I can I yep. get, like, two spots or three spots? Maybe one. <laughs> oh, shit, just one. <laughs> what would be your question? I'll think about it. Yeah? Okay, I can, I, it's it's like going to be definitely better trophy. than diarrhea, yeah. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's a good one. I have, like, when is the last time you cried? When was the last time you had a projectile diarrhea? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a jet. Any more specific. Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah it might be worth adding, especially for like a corporate version. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, back to <laughs> what you. was the back question to you, again? <laughs> <laughs> you, you start getting into like how yeah. it s kind of uh, materialized yeah. the, the idea. So I was like, well, I just have to come up with better questions. And that was such a fun part of like mm. creating that. It's just collecting a bunch of random questions and Googling icebreaker questions. I spread the word, told my friends I'm, I'm, I'm doing that like game thing, which was more of like a passion project. And I'm like, well, even if it's just for my personal use and playing it with friends on a road trip or on a holiday, like... It was not initially created from this, like, oh, my God, this is how I'm going to make a living, and then I'll be a digital But that's nomad. the coolest thing, and this is how the best, like, the same yeah. thing with podcasts as well yeah. for me. It's like so many people say, like, there's all oh, the competition, you're never going to yeah. succeed. It's like, I'm doing this for my, for fun, I'm literally right? having fun with this. I'm yeah. learning so much yeah. stuff. And, like, I keep uh, repeating this, like, I know you for how, how long now, and I know some other people for a long, long time, yeah. 100%, I never would know those things about them yeah. if I would get them in a podcast yeah. where we have, like, this conversation. So yeah, just totally back to in. you. <laughs> totally back to you with this. No, but I agree. It's like you can get so much more out of a conversation by just digging deeper and like having better conversations and mm -mm -mm. Um, yeah, just having the click. And it doesn't, you know, sometimes we don't see that first sight in a person, but then you ask like two or three questions and those people who turn out to be like proper introverts and, mm. you know, never really daring to speak up, they have the craziest stories to share. And I think that's really the glue that bonds. And uh, yeah. even if it's just like one question with a stranger, but you instantly like feel more connected, like... Um, the story and that but in the very first uh, steps of iConnect I was like bringing it to BGS like product placement best coffee in Bali <laughs> and gee, almond milk hey that's <laughs> what we're having right now yeah. the coffee with almond milk um, cheers. cheers and um, I brought it mm -hmm. <laughs> she's trying to talk and while she's <laughs> drinking coffee <laughs> and I roam I was like it's this moment it's like I cannot not cheer and then not drink but actually I'm still in the middle of the sentence <laughs> okay multitasking um, baby <laughs> so, um, anyway I brought the game and then we we're playing some questions and I still don't know this dude's uh, name by now but the question was just like what's your favorite ice cream flavor and it's salted caramel and we maybe spent five minutes to get it. Every time I saw him, like, on a party, I'm like, hey, salted caramel. Mm. And, like, you know, like, if, if I was an emergency and I saw him, I'd be like, oh, my God, salted caramel, help me. And <laughs> most know? likely you would not remember their name. Yeah. But you, it's like associative memory. Yeah. Like, there's certain things where you remember for these kind of questions. That, that salted caramel, amazing. if you hear this. <laughs> well, shout out to salted caramel. What is his real name? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. That's perfect. Um, but yeah, I feel like that just makes you feel more connected by knowing something about a person mm -hmm. that maybe not a lot of other people know about them. And how long, to be how long it took you from that idea when you start putting those questions together to the point where this happened? Like you actually this had a happened. physical... <laughs> physical uh, thing to have in the hand and to play with it and i'm guessing there's many different prototypes and different versions were before yeah. that yeah oh not too many actually really <laughs> um but i think i started in 2018 i was doing this like bucket list year and just like ticking off all the things i always wanted to do and i had a lot of time to like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. pretty much take action on anything that come to my mind 
Um, and then I just started with the very, very prototype, which is just like a bunch of questions in different color categories. Um, but it didn't look like the version now. And then um, I was still like traveling a lot, moved to Australia and I like, brought it to a few like road trips. And then every time I brought it, people were like, this is fantastic. Like, have you ever considered like, you know, like monetizing that, creating a game out of it? Um, and for me, it was just like to get more out of conversations that I had. Um, but then I think it was um, early 2020, like in January, um, I was just giving it a shot. And I'm like, well, I mean, as well, could give it a, a try and like um, create something. Yeah, you know, and it's still super fresh. It's 2022. And um, yeah, so in January, I started um, looking for like a graphic designer on Fiverr which is my favorite online shopping. <laughs> I just like to outsource everything. And then um, came up with all the questions, put them into def different uh, color categories, which we maybe come to in a second, what mm -hmm. they stand for. Um, and uh, yeah, I found this graphic designer in the Ukraine, actually. And um, she just, I came up with a bunch of ideas that I wanted to look like a phone and like where to place it. And uh, yeah, then it was like a very nice collaboration. Um, and then it just really like, grew as we kept on going and mm -hmm. then uh, you know like once you start the creative machine in your brain and like get the engine how going, much fun is to create that's stuff that's the best part and then like you look creating. and then you can look back and you're like i did this right you know but with all those people together with all those ideas yeah and like the first time i i was holding it in my hand i was like it felt that's that's, that's your baby that's my baby right mm -hmm. and i was like wow how must it feel if you have an actual baby that you made like came well, out of at yourself. least this one doesn't cry and shit all right? the time you and know? i can return it and, and like put, it in, a put box. it in a box <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to look at it uh, no i love babies um but that is like it's <laughs> what <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> we love babies we love babies it's starting not the the sound that comes out when there's actually a baby in the oh it's okay that doesn't get us i don't silent. have that one maybe next time i'm gonna have <laughs> i mean the, the baby screaming sound woman of, yeah <laughs> <laughs> not the, th the sound you were thinking of <laughs> anyway um ha, i'm distracted where was i who are um, you distracted by what's going on the, here yeah i don't remember where we were um so the the iconic prototype which was finally actually created and came to life when i was uh, in bali because i um long story short i lived in australia before and just left for a visa run but australia closed and then i got stuck in bali which is now probably one of the best thing that ever Damn happened it. to me shitty <laughs> Could bali be worse. it's so annoying <laughs> the worst place ever you can serve every day you can do all sorts of things that nah, no, bali sucks. no self-pity but to all be these fair, annoying you, people some uh, latvians around yeah, here so many <laughs> latvians i can't stand them anymore <laughs> the germans everywhere <laughs> Um, but let's say for the first month it was a challenge because I built up like a great life in Australia. I was not planning on leaving and then suddenly like the whole life that I built up was like, now we need the meow, meow, meow. Can you put the meow, meow, meow? Yeah. Oh, nope. no, sorry. Yeah, that's how it felt like. But plot twist in the story. Um, I then moved to like a co-working, co-living space. Yeah. space. Um, and together with like seven other digital nomads and we had like masterminds on a weekly base and really holding each other accountable to our goals and making all these like n sticky notes on the wall working on our goals and that actually really pushed me to nice. like press the button and like um, stop improving and coming up with new questions and to freaking get it printed um, so yeah, I think that was in maybe May or June when I had like the first sample edition and uh, yeah, since then I kind of got it rolling and I had a bunch of events then eventually actually later hosted a uh, launched a crowdfunding um, to like produce the first 100 and um, yeah, then they sold out pretty quickly. Luckily, they did not around, improved some questions and uh, just just taking in the feedback and implementing on what I could possibly improve. And proud to say that now, um, like this week, I'm actually getting the third production already. Wow. Yeah. And when you say third production, is like that means how many 
250. 250 yeah. units per production. Um, no, like in total for now. Okay. Um, but only sold in Bali. And whenever I fly home, I bring like a, a bunch of games. What about <laughs> online? How's the online um, sales? The biggest, the biggest uh, gap that I need to close is the global shipping. So right. from Bali, as much as I love this place to live. It's but tough. if there's anything you want to ship from Bali, like internationally, it's just co cost. Wait a fortune. minute. So you make them here in Bali at the moment? Yeah. Okay, so you need to find place to make them in Europe. Um, I do have like I do have a production in China, and I do have like a fulfillment center in China. So the supply chain is all set up, um, but I actually need to generate more cash flow to oh. push the button because then it only makes sense if you produce like five hundred or right, like right, right, right. one thousand games. Um, and it's not only the production, but to ensure that I actually like sell them all, mm -hmm. uh, or at least most of them, I need to like put money into marketing and all of that. So I have a bunch of ideas and like, as I said, supply chain is set up, but, um, yeah, I'm working on the investor deck to possibly find cool. a sugar daddy. Oh, that's what we need. We need sugar. So I, need sugar, sugar I need a sugar mama. I need a sugar mama as well. <laughs> Watching this right now, hit me up. <laughs> but it's only for business uh, purposes. <laughs> what was the name for that? Mm. Sugar daddy for business purposes. Right, looking for a sugar daddy for what business kind, purposes. What kind of business, though? <laughs> 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 we were talking about uh, juice just now. Juice. Uh, we're having... Um, beetroot is good for you. Beetroot okay. is good for you. But you don't have to worry about what mm. it is good for. <laughs> Anyways, um, so we are still discussing I connect and... Um, I connect, you connect, we all connect. We were still talking <laughs> about like how, you know, there's certain challenges about distribution and like sending it to people and things like that. How is... Uh, <laughs> it was funny <laughs> that you were using Tinder for it, did you? <laughs> 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 you actually want to connect with someone? <laughs> and then like swipe left no one was connect they just want to have fun I did have a few matches uh, yeah a few matches it's like you totally what is the weirdest way you actually sold to someone like how was it when someone saw it and they're like uh, could, could you send it to us or um, no actually you just uncovered me <laughs> Because that was, I deleted it by now, I have to say. But um, I did have, uh, so I'm not on Tinder. Um, but I was running like a. a Just be honest, they blocked you. <laughs> they don't allow you to use no, it anymore. Actually, they did not. I was surprised they did not. Bumble didn't allow me to put it up, but Tinder did. Um, so I was running like an iConnect um, speed network, no, speed connecting event for Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I was like, well, where do all the singles hang out? And it's Tinder. So I'm like, if anyone's looking for a date for Valentine's Day, um, they might as well swipe through Tinder and then find the event. So um, it's like very specific target group. So I just put the event flyer up. Um, and uh, yeah, like I know that a bunch of people saw it. I'm not too sure about the conversion rate. <laughs> Who actually would want to admit that they saw it on Tinder, which is not like anything to be ashamed of. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's nothing to be ashamed of. To, to Tinder is disgusting, just <laughs> so you know. <laughs> <laughs> At least no Tinder swindlers showing up here. Well, what about like the, the stories? I had one of my stun guys. Like he, he, they met. Uh, he got married to this lovely, lovely lady. They just had a baby recently. Mm. And first we swipe, now we wipe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There you go. It's like please don't put the Yeah, but there's a lot there's a lot of those stories. But I mean I think I think just as I said before, like anything in moderation can, you know, happen and, and Tinder in my <laughs> opinion. So Tinder. <laughs> and but in Tinder it just it gives you opportunity to meet someone. Especially yeah. if you have this crazy like here in Bali I like I stopped going to dancing thing because I just so tired in the evenings. Um, so I would go to Salsa Place and that Salsa Place now is too far and that's where yeah. you potentially could meet some people. I, I just don't go there. And and here, like, maybe I would go, there's some more social events here. Yeah. But, like, in the UK, I have nothing. I go yeah. gymnastics. I go other, like, bike riding. There's no girls, you know. Oui. There's no girls. And yeah. I don't, I hate clubs, especially in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, or pubs, or, like, people mm -hmm. just getting smashed. It's disgusting. So what do you do? Like, what is the option? That's you know, go and talk to someone randomly on the bus. Doesn't work. <laughs> people just look weird at you. Like, get <laughs> the look fuck. Look at their phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and uh, I actually wanted to also touch upon this, the, the concept, like, how brave we are on the phone. That's true. You know, we match with someone or even we see someone on Instagram's account and we mm. follow them and we're like, oh, they're, you know, hot, whatever, and do something. And you then you send, <laughs> and send, send, I'm just giving you tips. So sending <laughs> sending messages and stuff and then like, it's so cool. And then you, you meet up yeah. and then like, oh, yeah, so we kind of already spoke before. But just an idea, like, do you see someone in the cafe and come yeah. over and start talk to them? And 
Bali, it happens. I think, Bali, right? it happens. Yeah, Bali's yeah, more, more open. open to that. That's it's why not. here it's not necessary. But I get it. I think especially for introverts, it's such mm. a good way of like making a first step of like having like a conversation starter when they wouldn't do it in the offline world. Or as you said, like when you don't have the chance to meet someone, especially with the, the lockdown days. And it's a great opportunity. Like, again, everything in moderation, like... I just don't like the idea of being one in a list and like having this almost like human meat market. And, mm -mm. you know, when you don't reply, it's like 10 other people waiting or when whatever your eyes aren't as shiny as they look on your filtered picture. Yeah. And then they're like, nah, you know, <laughs> filter on it. Eyes, next. eyes is the problem. I, like, I don't know, but you just, <laughs> maybe not the eyes. So I thought um, your eyes are not shiny. Are you catfishing me? <laughs> no, but like when you go on a date and then you might not live up to the expectations yeah. that you put out on your Tinder profile. Like people just go home, swipe again and find someone else. And I just love the beauty of like real life connections. But I totally get the point. And I have to admit, <laughs> now that we're already here, I kept on using the profile. <laughs> and I do it. I call it like window shopping. Mm -mm. So then you just see, which is not, maybe not as generalizable for people who live in like cities, but at least in Bali there is. Um, so for people that I do see, like in the real world, like at my gym or when I go surfing, um, but you don't know anything about them. And then you see them on Tinder and then you're like, oh, like, I think it's very interesting to see the, the like the self image someone puts mm, up. It's mm, like, mm, how mm. do you want to be seen by others? That's interesting. Yeah. Instead of uh, the identity that I build up on you when I see you. So when I see someone at the gym, it's like, oh, always working out, super fit, disciplined, blah, blah, blah. But maybe that person has a like to totally like different self image, mm. and I'm like, do I like? And I think that actually is a boost to, uh, um, yeah, like have a better quality relationship because mm. you're not falling in love with the idea of someone, you're falling in love with what that person also wants to send out. Falling in love, like, Falling in love. Get, I'm a hopeless romantic. Get out of your castle. Um, marshmallows and stuff. <laughs> I do Falling in love. Falling in love and Tinder. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's why I use it as window shopping and kind of see it's like, oh, he looks like fun, you know, like going to festivals mm. and loves to surf. Um, doesn't take himself too seriously or something. And then I'm like, well, if we ever meet again in the real world, I did feel more connected to people. I'm like, oh, now I know your age. I know where you come from. I know kind of how you would mm -hmm. like to be seen mm -hmm. by others. And it's something that I relate to. I'm like, yeah. I never heard of window shopping. I, I, made, I made this up. <laughs> Why window shopping? <laughs> because I don't really I thought it's going to be like a market research. It's like, let's call it market research. But I, I pretty much nope everyone. But I just want to see what's out there. Oh. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the other one. Like, what's out there? What's out <laughs> and there? And then you're like, Best see, like, oh, there's nothing out there. But I've never, ever had a Tinder date in my life. Really? Mm -mm. Oh, wow. Mm -mm. I did have a Bumble BFF. That was a thing in Sydney mm -hmm. um, that you just, um, you know, meet friends. And that was fantastic. I met my, like, in the first week in, in uh, Sydney, I met, like, my absolute, absolute like Bondi sweetheart, and we're still like three years later, like that oh, close. Nice. And I spent my entire Sydney days with her. She was my yes girl, and uh, yeah, I think that's same for like. Um, actually, I do think we should also base our friendships on almost like dating profiles. Yeah. Mostly friends you just ideally meet through common interests. But if you actually figure out like, hey, we like the same music, um, we like I don't know, getting up early in the morning for a sunrise yeah. and stuff like that. It's better knowing that up front than like investing in a friendship and then figuring out like, whoa, like we're actually not But that's not such biting. a weird one because people think like it's weird. They think like, wait, this is like dating, but we're mm -hmm. like finding a friend. Mm -hmm. I think for girls, it's more acceptable than for boys. Boys would yeah, be like, true. like, how do you guys know each other? Oh, we matched on Tinder. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? Like as friends. <laughs> it's called Bumble BFF. <laughs> Bumble BFF or... That is a concept. Listen, I think someone was, uh, I'm not sure, like someone was saying something to you about how to promote your um, iConnect yeah. on like dating stuff. How, what was the concept? Um, date, yeah, basically like that's what I just came up with on the gillies that I didn't consider before. Yeah. But basically just putting up like pictures of the questions and then um, putting in the bios kind of, you know, if you want to make connections stronger than Wi-Fi, Get the game. Or mm, mm, mm. I came up with that one. Hold on. Oh, shit. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I connect the game that gets you into the game. <laughs> 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 Woo! Oh, my God, this is brilliant. Yeah. 
Isn't it? Yeah. I connect. What, say it again. You didn't hear? No, <laughs> it's I heard. Fantastic. Um, I said, I connect the game that gets you into the game. Dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's interesting. Because I was just thinking, like, it could be an actual dating app. Yeah, that's a good idea. Where you can, because like some dating apps already, they use these different questions, yeah. which gives you the kind of an idea about it. But it could be almost like you match with some of the photos and stuff. But before, and there would be like a task, like yeah. before you meet each other, you have to go through, through 150 questions. 150. Well, just <laughs> exaggerating. It could yeah. be 50, 20, yeah. 30, whatever the thing is. Or, you know, that idea when I, I love this, I love this challenge when girls uh, give give to boys most of the time. <laughs> I've never heard that other way around. Uh, so they'd be like, before we have sex, it has to be at least 10 dates. And then, <laughs> and then the guys, oh, okay. And I remember this one girl I was seeing like a while ago and she said something like, yeah, I'm not going to, I don't want to rush into anything and whatever. Like, like, why do you think I want to rush? Why would I assume yeah. that that's what I want to do? I just want to have sex straight away as soon as possible. And I said, you know what? 20 dates, bitch. And she was like, okay, accepted. And about date 15, she was like, oh, so how about we cuddle? It's like, no, no. Wow. 20 dates. 100%. Damn, plot because twist in the story. Ooh. No, because I am I'm just getting an, I'm getting annoyed when women mm. has the stereotype of men that all they want is getting laid. Yeah. And the the women are the ones who wanna connect and they're yeah. the only ones who wanna connect and it's like it's just it just really gets annoying on my nerves. And like why would you assume that that's all I want? And I said like so many times it's like I don't even enjoy sex when it's like a one night stand and we just meet someone you don't know anything about them. And it's it's you know and then, yeah, and with this girl, I was like, yeah, 20 dates. And then after 20 dates, it was beautiful. It was fantastic. But you actually but, did it. Yeah, but I did it. <laughs> and I was like, I can do another 20 dates, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's don't mess around with me. And it's like, oh, yeah. yeah, but you guys, you just want to have sex. Yeah. Like, to no, be fair, I read once um, that there are like two different ways of how men and women fall in love. And mm. like for men, it's like the physical connection first. And then they actually realize after some time, like, oh, I actually really enjoy spending time with this girl. And then it's like the emotional like breakthrough point or however Any time I had long, long relationships, it was the other way around. Yeah. Actually, my first girlfriend who I was four years together with, uh, I when we hanged out first couple times, I didn't even found her attractive in the sense of like I would be sexual. She gotta cut like, that out. <laughs> oh, she's fine. she's married with two kids. She's okay. happy, like you know. And she, she looks more beautiful she, than she, ever. She broke my heart a <laughs> long time ago. It's all mm. good. And uh, but the truth was, I was just like kind of stuck in this town where I was doing this. Uh, I was working for this company as a sales guy, and uh, we exchanged the numbers a while ago in this one festival. And I knew like there's a very like slim pickings I ever gonna see her again. But yeah. somehow end up in the same town where she was just living nearby. And we would go and hang out and the first couple of times was like, no, I'm not into her whatsoever. And she's like a little bit taller than me and like quite lanky and stuff. And I was like, that's not my type at all. And even though I didn't know what's my type is, but after like four or five times hanging out, and I was like, we are having so much fun. We're Actually, having such really an like amazing... Hanging out with her. But yeah, I really yeah. like hanging out with her. And then when we f became like actually physical, then I was yeah. like, oh my God, this is, you know, this yeah. is insane. Yeah. And I, I lost my virginity with her. Ah. You. And I, so <laughs> I love... I was 34. <laughs> I was 21. But uh, Ooh, okay. I was 21. And it was like the idea that how people say like oh the first first couple mm -hmm. times you just have to be with whatever just as long as you get over it fuck no mm -mm. you know but in the same time there is a big risk that it's going to be very difficult to get over those people yeah. because that's your first time yeah. and it was very very special and no one else is there out there and for rose you leaves and yeah it wasn't that far <laughs> that <but> was mine <laughs> oh <laughs> Oh, you have a cheesy <laughs> romantic. <laughs> um, no, mine was actually right outside the uh, the longest uh, waterfall in uh, Europe. Ooh, where is that? It's uh, in Latvia. There's this one little place where the waterfall is tiny. It's only like two meters waterfall, <laughs> but it's m long. It's really, really long. So apparently the story goes, long time ago, there was like an earthquake, and it was just like it kind of like did this kind of thing uh, and came up. Yeah. And that place is very famous also when salmon comes for breeding. Yeah. They, the salmon just flies around that time, and then people go and take photos, and salmon just flies around. And uh, and it was a, in a little cottage right next to it's like literally we can outside a window we can see that uh, waterfall. So whatever you and your rose, you and rose <laughs> paddles. <laughs> did you have the biggest uh, waterfall? <laughs> no, you didn't. I, d um, <laughs> I did not. I can can I, I cannot keep up with the waterfall. There you go. There you go. I'm I'm pretty sure roses were involved there somewhere as well. <laughs> <laughs> At least in your imagination. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 
are romantic. She's oh, by the way, I just keep seeing these necklaces. Anyone has a question where this necklace came? <laughs> when we went oh, to yeah, Gilly, I just wanted to ask. You know, <laughs> where's that cool necklace? Oh, from? this necklace is the best. When we uh, on the way to Gilly, there was this lady. She was just giving these for free. So she's like, "Hey, here's your, here's the uh, necklace for you." And then afterwards, as soon as I took them, then she's like, "Oh, and now could you just buy something from me?" <laughs> and then I bought this bracelet. Nothing's free in this world. Yeah, and the bracelet was gone, but this thing is still here, and I like it. It's quite cool, very simple. And then I would see other people on Gilan and they were like oh cool necklace dude <laughs> like where did you get it uh for free like, yes <laughs> a lot of those do you, do you remember the lady's name or where pe people can find it can you tag her on instagram it's just like a can you imagine if there's a tracker on it yeah probably there's a tps that's, that's tracking you tps a <laughs> <laughs> what is tps a gps <laughs> what is a tps yeah no, no? You, you're not saying GPS, you're saying TPS. No, I, me I meant GPS. Yeah, it but it sounds like TPS. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you meaning you, you, you put to it. <laughs> okay, do we want to just talk about anything else about um, iConnect or we can move on? I Is mean, I can quickly explain how the game works. Yeah, should, yeah? We, should we try to play it? Yeah, let's try. Yeah, let's try to play it. Let's do okay. it. Whoop. Okay, so wherever I put this in the camera it's probably there um <laughs> yeah we can do or, that or, or. in the camera there okay yeah. so it looks like apple product placement and i actually did check like the whole like design up front to make sure that apple cannot sue me for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. copying their design um but basically it looks like a phone which uh, can cause a lot of confusion when i go through custody because they think i smuggle like it actually did happen that i had yeah. to open my suitcase and I had like 40 eye connects on my way back to europe um, and they thought I was just like smuggling cheap phones, uh, phones from Asia to Europe. And then I was like, <laughs> it's not what you think it is. <laughs> oh, shit. And I opened it and there's all these quests, like cards. And they were like, haha. And okay. drugs and such. And <laughs> drugs and cocaine and all that. Um, <laughs> no. Um, and yeah, but uh, I like to create things that look like things that they're not. Not people, just things. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. Create so. things where they don't look like the, the things we think they are. Yeah. I do have like my AirPod case, looks like a little Nutella. Oh, okay, um, gotcha, gotcha, I have gotcha. a lot of things that, like uh, my, mm. my laptop thingy is actually looking like a book, like an old like book out of the 1800s. Mm, 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 mm. So yeah, that's kind of my thing. That's cool. <laughs> so I was like, well, at least I'm in alignment with my... Uh, my interests in my in my other life as well and it's just gonna create the design based on something that looks like a phone but it's not and so do the cards they basically look like uh, an iphone screen and then in the text message you do have the question mm -hmm. um and they come in six different color categories and each category has a wi-fi bar on top mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um the higher the colored wi-fi bar on top of the card the deeper is the level of the question. Ooh, and therefore the depth the strong, of the question. The depth oh, of the wow. question, yes. And therefore the stronger is the connection. That's why it's called I connect, make connections stronger than Wi-Fi. Wow. Boo, we need but that a sound means, effect. <laughs> so uh, we, we throw the dice, right, yes. to, to figure out what level of that is. But isn't wouldn't it be a good idea to always start with something very simple to like kind of work level up. Warm, warm up basically before there no? are like plenty ways to play it because like otherwise if you throw a dice you just met someone and straight away like do you yep. like anal <laughs> <laughs> that's why i didn't put the sexual questions in there because um. I, I still want to play with my grandma and i did <laughs> why don't you why don't you just have a separate um, that's what I'm working on right now. Yeah. It's like uh, creating naughty expansion. ones. The naughty. Everyone is asking for the, the naughty, naughty one's going to be smashing it. Not, naughty one's going to be amazing. No, Especially know. nowadays, people are just disgusting. Uh. It's like I'm doing <laughs> this thing now. And uh, like, remember when I did an interview with you as you were leaving the comedy? Uh, yeah, comedy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So those questions I do. You, you've seen those videos I posted on Instagram. Um, I actually have not. Yeah, I have to admit. Because you don't <laughs> check. You know, so yeah. it's about basically, so I call it Renard's quiz. So yeah. I, I walk around like on a beach and I ask these questions, like three questions very quickly and mainly you know i found that it's all about the sex and yeah. it's uh, the most fun of it yeah so like um, on this body comedy club i was asking questions about so what do you think is the most aphro aphrodisiac food and i yeah. would give three options and then i would say so like varied. yeah and um so basically it's very weird and i was checking Thank online <laughs> it's uh, there are three three options where oysters asparagus and uh and uh chocolate right asparagus? yeah and uh that's the thing everyone was like kind of <laughs> But when I was looking up this, uh, those quizzes, that's what they said, like, asparagus is the most aphrodisiac food at mm. the moment as, like, being checked. And then everyone was saying oysters. I was like, yeah. 
I know that oysters are fruity and, and, and chocolate as well. Yeah. But apparently asparagus. And the, the, the funniest part was like, everyone was like, yeah, but with the pee, it's like, can you try not to pee while you have sex? Is that <laughs> any way? Just for once. Yeah, it's for, just for <laughs> once. And then it was like, well, you don't know how we have sex. And so anyways, what I'm saying is that it's I just. I wonder what the British is to the game It's now. just <laughs> so easy to get people into that because it's these yeah. kind of questions. And I think the other one was like, I really had a lot of fun of it. Uh, I would say, how long do you think uh, when you date someone, how long uh, since you dated, you would be comfortable with uh, farting next to each other? Yeah. You know, and like uh, girls would say like, oh, like two, three months. Boys would say like maybe a couple of weeks or whatever. <laughs> But then, then I would compare with the, uh, the survey, w what was done by Google. For girls, it's a year and for boys, it's half a year. Wow. And I was like, what the hell that information came from? But, you know, because that was like around the world a survey to run i have to say yeah but it's like why not something fun <laughs> anyway. anyways and so how long do you wait <laughs> yeah uh how long before i fart yeah um it depends what i ate <laughs> <laughs> um i don't know i d i think it depends on, on girls like I, i i was dating this one girl who if we you know had sex or whatever and we in the bathroom and she would pee and she was like uh now could you sing because i don't want you to hear me peeing uh, and i'm like it's nah, it's nah, just nah. it's just a su and then she's no you have to sing if you're not singing i'm, I'm like then you have to go out of the bathroom so every time she's like on the toilet about to pee and i'm like tell me ma when i go home the boys don't leave the girls don't <laughs> <laughs> that was her thing yeah. oh wow and that was after how uh, how long um even after a while that was the girl we did the 20 dates with oh yeah, wow yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. and that was after like a while but again everyone's different okay let's go back to that just okay, saying in the no future you should have those like questions that. definitely like good food for thought <laughs> yeah and that would be like non-grandma questions that's non how you should call questions, them <laughs> yeah can i say can i tell a little story of one question that came up with my grandma yeah of course um so i think uh what was the question um yeah level six if you could relive one moment or time in your life which one would it be and then she said that it was the moment she fell in love with my grandpa and i was like and i have to say i hope my other grandpa doesn't hear it but <laughs> like my grandma's been divorced from my mom's dad and then got remarried but she basically said like the the first one like the first love is like wow the deepest and you know even if they like didn't end up in the greatest terms after their divorce um but still like the power of love like even in her when she's 80 years now it's like 50 60 years later that was like just fired it out like first thing that came to her mind and yeah. she's been a stewardess like she's traveled the world so she did a lot of cool things mm. um, she's just done a lot of different men like, <laughs> yeah, like i wouldn't say that <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah she did a lot she traveled a lot um but like that that was the first thing mm. that came to her mind was like wow the power of love is just uh, but also the power of the first time Fair enough. That's yeah. a huge one. Now like. she was engaged before to another man. <laughs> okay. But apparently that the other love mm -hmm. grandpa was just a, a cool dude. Because I remember like there's certain things when I, when I was a kid and like it's like your frontal lobe is still forming and stuff yeah. and, and that those kind of memories they just kind of get ingrained yeah. in your head and, and I still remember certain things about like my kindergarten teacher mm. or things like that. And um, yeah, I don't know. Like since I, I had like my you know, previous relationships. I don't think I ever had certain feelings of like butterflies, whatever, as yeah. I was experiencing then, because it felt like nothing else existed. Yeah, and this yeah. is the person and whatever, whatever. Two now I'm getting, uh, now I'm yeah. getting older. I'm just like, yeah, mm. okay, uh, whatever, move Where's on. the magic. Yeah. Like, that's just why I still believe in magic. There you go. On that, I'm tracing back to the game. It's also the 36 questions to fall in love, which is like the extra edition mm -hmm. um, that is, based on a study by the State University of New York where they uh, pretty much asked like complete strangers to sit in a laboratory and play these 36 questions in chronological order and then I think hold eye contact for four minutes which might have been <laughs> the reason and not the 36 questions and now please stop staring at me w what <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird when you tell someone about like holding eye contact and then oh. you feel like you can't look away it's No, the funniest thing, I was actually thinking about something else. I was thinking that one of the cameras is about to die. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it I was, I, like I did, projection. Yeah, I, I was, was just, just like a staring thing on it. You know, when sometimes you think about something, but your like eyes just kind of still yeah. focusing. Yeah. It's weird. Sorry. See, no. I made a whole different story up in my mind and I bought that. There you go. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, so this is the falling in love version, um, which is based on like three different pillars of creating connection, mm. which is is it like privacy, intimacy, and vulnerability? So there are twelve questions for each section. So this is the extra dating version. Okay. It's not going to be part of the like one to six, but oh, it okay, also okay. comes with the game. Because you have at the end of the day, you can have so many different versions. Yeah. I so know. many like questions. Just, that is endless. so yeah. many ways to connect with with someone. Like also for older people, yeah. for younger people, for teenagers. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah. it's it's like that uh, book. The highly. Um, we're going to talk about books later, but my, one of my favorite books is The uh, Seven Habits of the Highly Effective People. people. Yeah. And I remember that th- there was a whole long story that I was kind of introduced with uh, the uh, Sean Covey, who's the, the father and who was the creator. And that book didn't resonate to me at mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. But then somehow, by sheer luck, I found this book, exactly the same concept, but for teenagers. Mm-hmm. And that was written by his son. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I found that with the pictures and so everything. And it was so simple to understand. And then I looked at it, oh my God, this makes so much sense. And yeah. then afterwards I read the father's book, which was like, the, the language was way more yeah. complex and all that. And it was like, did make, it still did make sense. Yeah. But it just it just kind of so easy for me to understand the whole things that they were talking about. It's just a simple language, is the way it was explained for teenagers. Yeah. So the same thing you could have for teenagers, for like, I don't know, for university people who yeah. they have different values, they have different things they talk about. Finding themselves. You know, yeah. you can have like, I don't know, probably... 10 good versions yeah. of it. Yeah. Like, you know. I thought um, a Bali version or pr- pretty much every like city specific version yeah. could be like a Berlin version. Yeah, like Monopoly have different streets yeah. for different places. Yeah. And they're like some very specific questions. Different like, strokes for different yeah. folks, baby. Yeah. It's like in Bali, it's going to be, oh yeah. <laughs> in Bali, it's going to be like, um, whatever, like which, uh, which chakra is the most blocked at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Where do you want to go to learn how to float? Oh, good. <laughs> Yeah, that's hundred like percent. So you the have the craziest thing you've ever transported on a scooter, or like stuff like that. Exactly, I can yeah. imagine you can have so much potential with this. Yeah, seriously. Thank you. Wow. No. Maybe we have to cut that out, otherwise uh, someone's taking over that business idea. <laughs> I don't know, but you patent it. It's your mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So I'm um, like, um, the application takes around like six to eight months, Mm-mm-mm. and I did it in September. So I'm like still like waiting for the ultimate like approval. Yeah. yeah but yeah. it's in the process of being trademarked. So Perfect. ain't no one copying my idea. Motherfuckers. <laughs> Motherfuckers. I don't say that <laughs> word. Motherfuck- my parents might be watching that. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Okay, we have about five minutes to do some of that. Poo Let's poo. try it. Okay, normally, so how we would start the game is the person with the highest average screen time mm-hmm. um, is going to play. So since I went on a proper digital detox for the whole weekend, I think So my talking about the digital t- the detox, that was <laughs> hilarious. Her <laughs> so I'm messaging to Nini just to confirm what time we're meeting up and she still didn't send me some information. And then her housemate, sent <laughs> <laughs> housemate MJ, hi MJ, what's up man? Uh, MJ sent me a, a photo of her writing down the things and she basically outsourced someone else because uh, so she, she had a detox. Anyways, uh, I, just, I wrote it on a piece of paper and it's like, right now, I'm on a digital detox, but here are my answers to your questions. <laughs> See you offline. And then I go. passed it on to MJ and was like, please take a picture and send it to Renaz because I'm not going to touch a phone today. <laughs> yeah. And then you should just have like PAs like working for you. Six. I got six. Oh, wow. Straight away. Do you want to pick a question? Like just normally we just like. No, take just the give me whatever. Okay. I'm going to pick this one. I'll pick this one. I'm not going to read it. No. Just <laughs> Okay, it's not that deep, but what is something you think you could learn from me? Funnily, I think we had that question on the gillies as well. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we, d- we did have it on the gillies. Yeah, just be nicer. Damn, it's you're the so same nice. question that I was just... Yeah. Oh. It's like, because Nini is just the, like the guru of being nice and sweet. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, do I want to see you angry ever and pissed off? You know what? Like, it takes a lot to get me angry. And normally, like, I get very quiet, and I figured out that's based on my personality type because I love harmony. So mostly, like, when it's, like, at the level up to 75%, I just stay quiet. And when I'm, like, silent, that's when you know that I'm actually, like, angry and I don't say a word. Because I'm, like... Is, shit is a go, to go yeah. down. So when Nini doesn't say a word, it's, like, ooh, 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 ooh. Oh. I don't say, like, no, I'm fine. I don't do that. But I just get very, like, quiet. But when I'm at the point where it is like we hit like 75 to 76 percent and something is really like against my value system, 
I can't speak up for myself. I can't. I'm surprised when that, because I barely experienced, but then I'm like, wow, I didn't know I had that inside of me, but it's only triggered by something that goes like really against my like sense of justice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then I'm like, ooh, I so still got it. So did you start it. yelling? Yeah, I <laughs> yell. And then I'm still, I feel like I'm still being respectful, but I definitely can get angry and speak up for myself. And yeah, it's a, a strange feeling, but. <laughs> no, that's the one. I, oh yeah, yeah. Do I actually had it once. When I saw this guy that stole my phone and then he got caught um, and found him at the police station. And I went like three times. They didn't allow me to see him. And eventually, like I really st st stood up for myself. Like I need to talk to this guy. And I thought they're going to bring him out. And um, eventually they let me in. So I was in Bali in this like group cell in this like shithole. I cannot describe it any better. Mm -hmm. um, and they let me pass the, the whatever, like I came to the bars and he was like facing me. And um, he basically insisted that he did not steal my phone. But when he saw me, he was like, hey, how are you doing? So he did recognize me, but he insisted that he didn't steal it. And that was just against my inner sense of justice. So mm. I did understand his motives. I was like, maybe, you know, need yeah, to sell yeah, the phone, yeah, provide the food. That's all fine. But uh, I thought you could have no, that's, sound that's, effect. That's like, um, but yeah, the fact that he lied into my face was against my inner sense of justice. Mm. And then I was like, wow, this volcano coming out. And I yelled at him and it's like, we both know you did it. And like, just wanted to leave like an emotional yeah. message that he's not going to do that to anyone ever again. Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, as you said, the motives, like how, what are the motives for those people, you know, especially someone who struggles or whatever. And, and like, I do understand, you know, it's like crazy That's a times. tough one, tough one. Because like, yeah. I'm being quite lucky. Oh, but one, um, I got, uh, someone stole my bicycle. I bought it in UK, very new, like cost me about 600 uh, pounds, quite pricey. And someone just took it uh, from the garden, just took no it away. Way. And I think I actually saw the guy who was who had it. Yeah. But I had a very, um, I, I was suspicious that he was a drug dealer, local around. No, you don't and I was thinking, yeah. And if I were gonna go, like, let's say, deal with the dealer. <laughs> let's say I'll go beat him up. Let's yeah. say that. Yeah. He knows where I live. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's just like, uh, it's just you take that yeah. karma, eat it up, enjoy yeah. it. You know, karma I'm like, huge. and yeah. that money, pff, it's there, it's not yeah. there. Like, who gives a fuck? So yeah, okay, we are sidetracked again. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> um, I'm gonna ask you that question and that is, what is the defining moment in your life and how did it impact you? Defining moment in my life, it's Ooh, so easy when deep. I got kicked out of Canada. Oh yeah, that uh, is probably very defining. Yeah, and sitting, yeah. sitting in a little jail and just trying to figure out what the fuck am I doing in my life. And, uh, but, it, but you know, that was very defining because also it was uh, impacted by, by um, things out of my control. Yeah. So that's a different thing. It's like when you sit and make a decision and you can influence it, that's a different thing. But when you just like, okay, so now this option not going to happen for you. Yeah. Now we have another option. Yeah. And I remember very clearly, again, talking about the seven habits of h highly effective people. One of the number one rules is like you can be reactive or pro proactive. Yeah. So I could react and just cry and just be like motherfuckers you know fucking hate you or uh proactive was just like okay so let's think about what other options are there and uh, and maybe there's a reason why this this happened and looking back now that was probably one of the greatest things would happen yeah. in my life uh, another segment is gone another 30 <laughs> minutes we yapped away so uh, yeah. we're gonna move on next segment and we're gonna continue this okay yeah, we're gonna talk about that, but let's do two more questions. Let's do two okay. more, two more thingies. So we did off camera. You okay. throwing a dice. Now you have to do it on camera. Two. It's a two. Just to remind okay. again to people who are watching. So if it's from one to six, as bigger the number, as more in depth the question are. Yeah. yeah. So the higher the number, the deeper the level. But there's always an option. You can just have uh, just play one by one and say let's take the first stack which is yeah. the basic questions and yeah. just build your way up because because i thought in case if people are not really comfortable with each other they would start with the basic yeah. stuff that's an option that's an option like you yeah. just pick like uh, any category 
Or you say like, you know, you just do level one, two, three, and then when it's a four, you do one again, five is two, and six is three. I think so you should hire me as a, the idea generator. I think I I've already given you so many ideas. Because <laughs> one of my ideas back in the days was like to create a system for young people to help out with figuring out what career they could choose. Yeah. And I was coming up with the idea for a website where they would just fill out certain things like what kind of personality type you are. Based yeah. on that, there would be what kind of uh, careers would be good for you, suit for you. And then I realized that every country would be so different. Mm. Yeah, or there would be different Cultural differences. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. then s- very similar s- stuff for yeah. you to adapt in Definitely different places. Like differences. certain questions uh, in uh, Bahasa, in, yeah. in, uh, in you know, here in uh, Indonesia yeah. probably would not fly. The Christmas question might not go well in the Hindu <laughs> exactly. Hindu culture. And so that means it's there's so much potential, basically. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> If I ever need someone to hire as a... I'm never going to hire you. <laughs> generator. <laughs> I know who to text on LinkedIn. Okay, the question is, to me, <laughs> now actually... Yeah, like I should read it. I should read it. Good to yeah, me. I already read it. So, Nini. Yeah. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I, I have no idea what question is going like, to come up. What were you really into when you were a kid? <laughs> ha! So, I think there's a difference between the activities that I did and what I was actually into. Like, I did play tennis and tried out, like, different sports, mm. like... Uh, self-defense, um, like running, athletics, dancing, all of that. Um, but what I was really into, <laughs> I'm actually just stretching the answer because I'm still like, la, 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 still thinking <laughs> what I was into. Because <laughs> I know that even though I played tennis and stuff, that was not like really You're a proper speaker now. That's what in t- uh, they teach you in Toastmasters. Just ta- start, start talking yeah, stuff around, right? around, and eventually get to the point. Or people just get so bored, they're yeah. like, oh, okay, cool, next. Yeah. <laughs> huh. I was always I think that really hasn't changed much that I was always into like adventures and doing stuff and like getting people together like uh, organizing clubs and you know like making like these little communities and finding like secret um, how do you call it like secret hideaways where we mm-hmm. all meet and uh, like just yeah it was a proper like adventurer just I mean I grew up in a little tiny village where you can just um, you know sit on your little bicycle and like cruise around and people know where you belong to how tiny was your village 1410 that's smaller than mine yep. I thought mine is like super small mine was 5000 Ooh, that's a city <laughs> yeah every time I would talk about to someone like oh I grew up in a small town yeah. as well and then they usually the answer where they would have the oh 20,000 yeah. you know 50,000 that's yeah. not a tiny city But no that's a oh, small cool. town it's what, what is the closest like bigger city in Germany was it like Stuttgart is like 45 minutes away oh, okay. so it was a proper village like very yeah. rural um, and I remember actually one time <laughs> uh, we had this like local festival not festival but they place like the May tree it's like a tradition that you place it like on the on the square like center square and then the whole village gets together for like watching how they build up the tree and stuff and I was just kind of bored and then I knew we were going to go for food after that um, so I was four years old sitting in the pub by myself <laughs> <laughs> ordering a Fanta and I'm like and the and the and the uh, waiter was like well you're here by yourself I'm like oh my parents gonna come later and the whole village freaked out which I didn't know and everyone around was like looking for me because oh, they thought shit. I got kidnapped and like everyone was making this whole like uh, search and was like Nini is lost and I mean obviously in a village everybody knows each other so people were trying to find me and eventually I just saw my se- my, I exactly remember that scene my sister sitting on my dad's shoulder like they're walking in and I just see them through the glass door I'm like finally they're here and you know it's just like at the end of my Fanta and then they walked in and was like Nini we've been searching for you all over and I'm like just having a drink wow <laughs> i have very similar uh like it was mine was probably a little bit scarier so me and my sister we decided to go uh visit our friend and we kind of just just uh, stayed there uh, watching mm-hmm. cartoons and stuff and my mom like back in the days obviously no cell phones nothing yeah so my mom that's was how old you are yeah exactly <laughs> super old And uh, we lived right next to the river, and it was yeah. a spring when the ice started going. Yeah. And so we, as a kids, would love to hang out with the next to the river where the yeah. ice goes and stuff. So she literally thought we dead. We like we died. Oh my god. So she started calling out morgues and and police and everything like what she could. And and then I think she somehow thought of that to call to to this friend of my like where we hang out. And then, yeah, she finally found out that we were there <laughs> just <not> chilling. Dead. <laughs> yeah, just chilling. 30 years later, still going strong. Uh, yeah, that was that was crazy. And it's like, 
I don't know. You know, you can assume so many things would would happen with your kids, and especially when they're just right next to the yeah. river where they like to hang out. Yep. And we did have stories about like people drowned and like kids drowning mm-hmm. around. Okay. So okay. So not. It funny. was. And you see, this is a this is a such a segue. Like yeah. we started talking about this, and we were talking for ages yeah. now. And, and, that's and that's the idea of the game. It's a conversation sparking. Mm, so mm, mm, mm. ideally, you should like totally sidetrack and you know like uh, end up in a whole different topic and be like, oh, how the heck did we get here? What was the actual question? So, and also, you should never ever be done with all these questions because <laughs> mm, mm, mm. um, like the goal is really to just like have a conversation conversation starter and then based on that like create the other stories like i had i had questions or did we just talk about for like one and a half hours with a whole group i think question was like what was the worst date you've ever had Mm-mm-mm. and there's a com- group of complete strangers i was just invited to this like group dinner and brought i connect and then we talked about this question for so long that like in the end we're like what was the question and that's like you know when you that's where the magic is created when you're just having the click yeah. The perfect, the, the the greatest thing is that if someone would just randomly ask that question, yeah. just like in conversation, people would be like, "What's wrong with you?" Yeah. But we yeah. play a game. Yeah. Now we have a perfect reason right? for it. Yeah. And it makes total sense. Yeah, hundred percent. It's really good. And and also mm-hmm. remember when we played in Gili. So let's say you threw a dice and you answer the question, but then you like uh, you can ask everyone can answer yeah. the same question yeah. and it just turns into from like this one question for we should take my maybe three four minutes it ends up like 20 minutes of conversation yeah. back and forth <gasps> oh yeah. really that's what your experience was yeah oh my god tell us more and that's really how you connect yeah. with people that's the glue that bonds that is you know, really stories good idea. that last longer than 24 hours yeah cheesy tagline. fantastic <laughs> one more just one more okay so I, I can roll the dice you. i'll roll the dice bush one no. no let's go the let's, the, go, let's go the five let's go five, five. i threw five <laughs> a fun fact yesterday um i was uh, having a little me time date and i played i connect with myself mm. so for lonely people this works as well yeah <laughs> not lonely it was conscious me time i oh, just sure. want to have a date with myself. whatever you tell to yourself <laughs> <laughs> i was like going so many dates and i'm like now i have a date with myself <laughs> so busy <Yeah>. dating <laughs> no it's really nice you know reconnect with yourself because um, last week, I, I mean, I love being social, but I had like social like group dinners on every single night, like workshops and dinners and stuff. So yesterday I was like just taking a day off my phone, hanging out with myself and just doing whatever like I feel like. And then took my little journal and then sit in this nice Italian place playing I Connect with myself and just only did level five questions. Which Italian place was it? Is it the what not far away from Deus? Um, No. Okay, no. no. Let's just move on because I'm okay. literally thinking about how I'm gonna have ice cream there later. Oh, there's a Italian yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Opened by uh, the g- the guy who's main chef and he's a uh, owner as well. His name Ooh. is Mike. He okay. uh, used to train with Bali MMA. And now yeah. he's uh, training with the other gym. And he's a chef. Maybe that's why he's training so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, Renard, we have a great pasta here. Yeah. Come here. See? But I'm, I'm doing this vegan month. Um, so I was going to the vegan Italian. Oh, okay. There's a place that like I had like creamy carbonara with like fake bacon Ooh. and stuff. So it's really craving all that stuff. Um, and I know it's going to be over after that month. Um, but yeah, it's a good little... Uh, you know, get away when you crave something that's like creamy, cheesy, and meaty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But creamy, cheesy, and meaty. Oh, baby. <laughs> talking about food. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> I haven't eaten anything today. Ooh. Yeah, it's, okay, uh, let's quickly end up this podcast. Yeah, it's <laughs> almost six o'clock food. today. But I ate so much yesterday before, uh, after the show. I stopped by this place and sometimes I just have no control. Mm. I got three, uh, two food packs. Beast. Two packs of uh, M&M's, uh, like the massive ones, but not the M&M's, you, uh, like European like one. the peanut ones. The local ones, they call they, they taste pretty much the same. Yeah. Then a pack of crisps and uh, ice cream. <laughs> Proper dinner. Yeah, it was bad. Get your ma- micros on. Or is that yeah, so now I'm cleansing. Yeah. Okay, question. <laughs> okay, the question is, what did your last relationship teach you about yourself? <gasps> <gasps> Digging deep, level five. Level Ooh. five. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. No. <laughs> level five question. <laughs> do, do, do. Glad it's not a meow, meow, meow. Yeah, it's going to be after the answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did my last... Re- well, I definitely learn ev- uh, every time you have a relationship, learn something, mm. you know? And I think for me, the biggest ones, I usually <laughs> learn that I'm not a nice person. No? No. And it's... Uh, I'm, I'm very selfish. 
you know and like as older i'm getting I'm, i start recognizing that i'm trying to do something about it yeah so i mean that is a good thing because then i just kind of open my eyes towards yeah. certain things and i remember with my very very first relationship with uh it was uh after we broke up and and i was talking to my sister and my sister just pointed out certain things what also was um showing similarities to my father and yeah. both me and my sister we had not we didn't have much respect to our father yeah um well he was an alcoholic for once but for other thing like he had so he was quite like i don't give a fuck about anyone else and i just doing my thing okay. and it's a very interesting concept because most of the like successful people in general they are quite selfish because they mm. focus on their things so much that yeah. they don't do that so but in the same time i think there could be different levels of selfishness you know yeah. when you know that's your me time and i'm focusing on the things what i'm very passionate about and this is what i'm going to do they're going to be sacrifices and you're going to sacrifice like having quality time with other people yeah. but and still you could have that quality time but just less of it yeah. instead of just taking all of it And that's again seven habits of highly effective people Jesus Christ <laughs> I really keep like saying that, that book. Book. there's a four four pillars what they talk about the, yeah. the four it's like your health uh, your like money financial work uh, your your heart and your soul and so as soon as we don't have balance there then certain things going to go down yeah. and for me for many years now it's been mainly my career is the main focus and if there is like you know time for soul like yeah I kind of fit in so <clears throat> going back to relationship most of the time I end up just like kind of neglecting those people and and saying that mm -hmm. I have perfect excuse and I'm doing mm -hmm. doing all those things and um <clears throat> afterwards you just kind of look at it <clears throat> so how long are you going to sacrifice mm -hmm. you know just like <clears throat> when people talk about like how long you're going to chase the money and when you realize that's not the value in your yeah. life yeah but I've been so focused in uh, like in years just to not end up like my dad as well because mm -hmm. my dad end up not using his talents not using his potential and just kind of getting stuck in this little town without much of a future mm -hmm. and then he would find like that escape with in alcohol and all that stuff and then literally the best lesson what my t dad taught me was not to be like him okay you wow. know and then you just struggle with all these things around it and my god it just so, got so deep it went so deep That was really deep. <laughs> that probably made up for a level five question. There you question. go. There wow. you go. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the final question. Yeah, like I think we should do uh, Ending with a bang. <laughs> yeah, what else we can say about iConnect? Um, it's a great, great game. <laughs> Just do it, buy it, like, uh, have it, support Nini. Like, uh, is Nini actually your real name? No. What is the real name? Katarina. Katarina. Yeah. Don't say it's... <laughs> I Kata call it my trouble name. And it's only like official institutions. Katarina like Fritz. Yeah. <laughs> You've been such a bad girl. Yeah, it's, it really... <laughs> I will punish you. Oh, it, shit, that sounds a different like way. Right? <laughs> it's not the immigration officer saying that. <laughs> Katarina uh, Fritz next, please. Yeah, it's like the... My, I call it my trouble name because mm. only uh, like uh, people, like official institutions call me by that and everyone else calls me Nini. Yeah. So then I know that shit is real and my parents when I'm like Katarina you're late like mm, la, la, la. Mm, especially mm. in German you can say that like very harsh like say it harsh in German Katarina like that <laughs> Schmetterling I just wanted to say Schmetterling <laughs> yeah yeah we're, we're known to we're actually the country of poets and um, uh, poets and thinkers or something so actually the, I have to say the German language does have like a lot of different a lot of words to describe emotions to describe mm. feelings um so it's a very like broad diversity it just doesn't maybe sound so nice to the ear just phonetically yeah it's not not like just like russian russian language yeah. sounds like it's uh news 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 it's like a, a, a reverse when someone speaks right it's like um, <laughs> i think that the arab language is the har harshest i think like when i was yeah, in maybe, e sure. i worked in egypt for like three weeks and like all the <laughs> But the, but then Pardon then you me? kind of but but when you, you get used mint? to it when you get used <laughs> yeah. to it a little bit more then you understand actually you start feeling the connotation you start feeling yeah. that how they and yeah. then you're like oh actually it's not too bad I think it's that that's with all the languages it's true listen I want to talk a little bit about your upbringings oh yeah hi mom and dad <laughs> hey so <laughs> you grew you up much. in a small town we were just yep. dis dis discussing that very just tiny one small town girl <laughs> living in a lonely world oh my god I need to look up <laughs> that song while you're doing that whole thing um I so yeah the so midnight train <laughs> going on and on and on and on <laughs> yeah she does go on and on <laughs> <laughs> it's just the lyrics of the song but I'm yeah. glad you got the 
the link. And <laughs> um, I still have this song here. <laughs> um, so yeah, about your upbringings. Tell us a little bit it's about your family, <laughs> about your sister. So one sister. It's uh, one sister. She's amazing. Like if I could have picked a sister, I would have picked her. Like she's. Mm. Uh, anything you could ever imagine and then like an older sister she's just fantastic it's like uh, yeah <laughs> that's it <laughs> question answered Francie I love you <laughs> so you grew up in a very small town and yep. lived there till you were 18 before you um, went so I grew up in the village until I was 10 and oh, then okay. um, like we had a, like a nice apartment but then my parents wanted to level up to living in our own house and um, we found a, a house in the next town which was like five kilometers away mm -hmm. and i was like i was devastated to leave the village and i'm like i don't want to leave this village and um like i'm gonna find a guy to marry from this village and i move back and i was like heartbroken like i was crying like five kilometers when you grew up in a village it kind of makes you like an anonymous like a no name when you like move to town and in the village i like I, i had i was someone you know i was 10 but i was like the girl that had a phantom by herself when she was four um so yeah but then we made the move full song yeah it is so um, you were devastated that you moved out of the village at the beginning yeah and my mom still like uh, makes jokes about how you know like i wanted to marry a guy from the village and mm. now i'm like basically live on the other side of the world and mm, she's like mm, mm. <laughs> remember that day when you like didn't want to move five kilometers away and she she's still hoping i'm gonna mar marry a guy from the village and i keep on telling her as like i'm sorry to shatter your dreams but this is very very likely not gonna happen um but yeah i moved to uh, the town then with like 20,000 people um went to high school there i think my biggest achievement was being uh, president of the school when i was like 17 and president was, of the school and it was the biggest school of this like state district yeah no, it's the state like the 60 16 um states in germany it was like the biggest school can you pull your microphone a little bit down because i can't see your face there you go do you want to see my face yeah and then, <laughs> then this one just up like that there you go Woo. okay yeah And um, yeah, so uh, I was going to high school there and then eventually realized like when I'm 18, I just want to move to like a city and I want to go where like magic happens. What was that point for you? Because I know very vividly what was the point for me that I knew that I want to move from a little town. Yeah. Then I went to a big city, did my mass, uh, did my education. But even then I very quickly realized I want to go somewhere else. Yeah. Did you have those breaking points where you can mm. kind of like there's more out there to see and to do? Finally, yeah, like whenever we visited my, my auntie in Munich, mm. uh, whenever we went there, <laughs> I was like prepping myself for becoming famous, you know, <laughs> it's like I want to be an actress, I want to go to Hollywood and in music, they, uh, in Munich, they had like the, um, the um, cinema studios and we did a tour once and I'm like, oh, maybe I'm going to be discovered and like really I always had this thing like I want to be famous when I was 10 and like wrote a uh, letter to the Ol uh, Olsen twins and stuff. And in Munich, they were always walking around through that, like the shopping street and interviewing people for these like girls' magazines. And then you always see like Natalie, 14, and then her statement and the picture. I'm like, oh, maybe one day, you know, they're gonna ask me to. Give me. I don't know. I had this thing about the cities as well, like famous people hang out, mm. and then you know, there's like a chance to go out there in the world. So I knew that as soon as I finished high school, I want to move to like a bigger city, which for a long time I thought it was going to be Munich, but then it turned out to be Cologne, um, which was a great choice. And I like went there to study for my bachelor's and um, during my bachelor's, like went abroad several times, living in Mexico for exchange, did like an internship in Shanghai. Um, and yeah, just really like getting a taste of going out into the world and mm -hmm. i think the more often you do it the less scary it becomes yeah, so it's 100%. like training a muscle you know getting out of your comfort zone and you're like oh well if i can make it in china <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i can you know i'm confident to like go to pretty much any country in the world and be fine like it's just not it, nothing could be any more different from your home culture than going to like china where they don't even not like same like gesture mimics facial expressions like so different whatever you, you like different culture different religion like nothing to relate to in that way and then after that it made, made me so much stronger to like go to mexico after and be like oh at least you know i didn't speak spanish before i went but like at least i kind of get what they're saying by knowing french and italian and like they like have the same like 
religion mm, 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 and stuff. Something so to relate to. Something but to so relate to. Yeah. when you just started traveling, did you have a notion and feeling that uh, you're going to come back to Germany and, and live in Germany and settle down in Germany? Like, uh, and, and I'm guessing now for you, it's like, whatever, I'm happy. Yeah. It doesn't matter anywhere yeah. like to come back home. Because I remember like when I moved to Canada the first two years, after two years, I thought that's it, I'm going to go back to Latvia. Yeah. And there was certain times when I kind of missed it and all yeah. that. But then I came back to Latvia and I was like, I had a massive culture shock. This yeah. is a pile of the shit. I don't want to stay dip. here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was like, all the people, everything, just people are so depressed and always mm. complain. I'm like, that's it. I don't want to be part of this. And that's why I made that decision. Yeah. No matter what, I'm not going to yeah. live here. And now I know for sure I just want to live anywhere. I'm, I'm surrounded by cool people and I have I, I can do my things. Yeah. So did you have that as well in the beginning that you thought you're going to go back to Germany? Or straight away you were like, no. Um, I always had my base in Cologne and I knew I had to go back because I'm, I wasn't done with my bachelor. So yeah. it was only like a temporary, like, you know, like spreading my wings and fly and then I have my base. Um, but then I was done with my bachelor's and actually came to Bali for the first time. Uh, so I was do doing like a volunteer project, teaching English, like in a school, like rural up in the north. Um, and that was like the first time I was like, I'm going to a place that I want to come back to, you know, mm -hmm. the other place where like, it's nice to visit. But that was the first time that I was like, oh, maybe I can imagine like, you know, like not living in Germany or like settling myself, spending more time at like a different country. Um, and then, um, yeah, after that I moved to Amsterdam for my master's. So that's oh, the first time. Sweet. Yeah. Amsterdam. Amsterdam. I had my birth birthday, 30th birthday there. We got so high. <laughs> we were like so tired and we went for a nap to a cinema. Oh, wait, oh yeah, that story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I told you <laughs> the totally thing. The and I, uh, I don't want to talk about the red, <laughs> red light district. It was traumatic. It's what happens in the red light district stays in the red light district. <laughs> but you can actually live... Uh, I wouldn't say normal life there, but there's like a life outside, uh, you yeah, know, yeah, like outside of weed, and weed and red light district. Like, because my ex girl, the, my first girlfriend, she studied in uh, Amsterdam for a yeah. while, and I came to visit her, and that was another time when I was just like, oh my god, yeah. the world is so beautiful. There's so many things to see, and yeah. weed was awesome. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it helps. So, but you can yeah. also get uh, get high in a nice park and like yeah, exactly. <laughs> high museum crawl or whatever people do when they come to Amsterdam. Um, but actually then while living f like in a different country, like properly living, like, you know, having like shared apartment, living with friends, having my fridge, having my bed and knowing like I'm not traveling. I'm actually like live in a country where they don't speak my, my uh, native language. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, but then funnily, like it, fe it felt like the, you're always making like bigger steps. So first from like the village to the, the town and from the town to the city and then from city to like another country, which was still in Europe. And um, funnily, I always had it, I think since, I don't know when it started, but maybe the first time I met Australians, I was always clicking with Aussies. Mm -hmm. I always had a thing for like Australian people. Probably some people mistake you for an Aussie. You look a little Luckily, bit like Aussie. Yeah, yeah, like I'm always happy when... And and all that, Surf, surfing and like, shit. No yeah. worries, mate. <laughs> no worries, mate. <laughs> yeah, nah, nah, yeah, good day, mate. Uh, uh, Dingo saw my babies. Oh, that was the worst one. Dingo. My Australian <laughs> friends hate me when I do this. What's the Dingo one? Uh, like, the, my, uh, Dingo stole my babies. A Dingo stole my babies? Yeah, and there's an actual true story that uh, this one lady, she killed her child in Australia and then blamed on Dingo's. No way. The Dingo dog stole the baby. But afterwards, they found out and then arrested her and all that shit. Okay, it's almost <laughs> like Tiger King when Carol Baskin did not feed oh her husband to the tiger. How do you know Tiger King? You don't know all the movies? I was talking about she I knows do Tiger know King. Tiger. I think there's a certain period during lockdown uh, where okay. everyone had to go through the Tiger King uh, binge watch time. <laughs> and we're all united in that. Um, his boyfriend with no teeth was so funny, and then he got his teeth uh, teeth out. He looked great with he teeth, I have to say. And then he realized <laughs> that he's straight. <laughs> that was that one? Damn. There you go. Okay. Um, so, uh, also wanted to touch upon your touch upon your parents. Um, no, about talk about your parents. So, yeah. mom and dad. What did you, did you do? I mean, <laughs> I saw. I've seen so many photos of you and your dad. He says he looks like a, such an amazing <laughs> character. I could, you're gonna look for dad's question. What is it? What do your parents do for work? <laughs> is that what your dad came across? Oh no no no! Because you have a dad's question in I, there. So um, my dad uh, was 
like my sugar daddy that I paid back, but he uh, like borrowed me the money first for the first iConnect uh, production. So I gave him um, the right to like put like two questions in the game that oh, he's okay. gonna come up with. I'm proud to say I paid the money back, and I'm like strong, independent woman. Nice. Um, but yeah, so that <laughs> thank you. Um, and yeah, so I gave him the right to put in two questions, little legacy and uh, gratitude that he helped me setting that up. What and are the questions? I think one is if you could bring back a deceased person for 24 hours, who would you pick? Mm. And the other one was um, if you could ask one question that had to be answered like 100% honestly, who would you ask that question? What would that question and be? And we had that one. Yeah, and one yeah. of the boys was asking, I would like to ask the God. Yeah. Uh, what's my purpose in what's life? What's the purpose yeah. in life? And, and I said, like, ask me. I pretend that I'm God. <laughs> <laughs> and I, <laughs> I asked, like, the answer is just be happy. Yeah. Ooh. Boom. Boom. That's how we roll. <laughs> Okay, so what what does uh, what do your parents do and used to do? Um, <laughs> they're still active. <laughs> um, they still do their jobs. Um, my dad actually has a I call it Tinder for for tires. So he does have like an online platform for connecting like tire suppliers to like <laughs> tire suppliers. Tire suppliers. Um, to uh, what's the word like car houses and like retail. Oh, uh, okay, like shops, shops. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, he always had a thing for like being one step ahead in technology. Nice. So he kind of, he always was like in a, in a, uh, as a proper German, you know, like in the automobile, like cars, la 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 industry. Um, does he drive BMW? <laughs> no, he actually does drive. Like it's his passion. Uh, V-Dub camper vans. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So yeah, I used to have a camper one. Yeah. Yeah. My mine was, uh, uh, Japanese, uh, uh, what they call Mitsubishi, uh, Honda. I think it was Honda oh, step wagon. Uh, fin step wagon. Fin Finnish, isn't it? Honda is Finnish. Scandinavian, I think. Swedish. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> That's how much I know about cars. Oh, maybe not. Go. Maybe I mixed up with Volvo. <laughs> yeah, Volvo is Swedish. Yeah. Swedish. That's yeah. Honda, that. Japanese. Hon Hon okay, whatever. <laughs> Let's cut that out, please. <laughs> <laughs> you can't know everything. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. I looked that up later. I actually worked for Volvo. I worked for Volvo car dealership in Canada for like three months. I hated every day of that job because I had to sit and wait like when some someone comes in and just stares at a car or whatever, and I would come up and like, oh, like, look, this is a shiny one, very nice. <laughs> and then they asked me specific questions. I had no fucking clue because I never cared about cars yeah. and I tried to learn the spe 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 an specifications <laughs> and I would never like learn them and uh, the only time I enjoyed it was the first two weeks because I was allowed to drive all the cars just Ooh. to test drive them <laughs> I was cruising around like motherfucker but yeah <laughs> And cars. that's why you're not working for no. Canada. And I quit that Volvo. job to be to rather do door to door sales because I stopped door to door sales and I was looking for a normal job yeah. and I found a Vol Volvo thingy and then so uh, and I hated it and then my friend said uh, we can open a new office in uh, Saskatoon yeah. and that's how I ended up in Saskatoon in minus thirty degrees going from house to house selling cable. I would rather do that than sit in a shiny, awesome, warm place in, in Volvo dealership and not be able to influence the outcome of my success. Yeah. Because that's how it felt. You just sit there and someone's going to come in and hopefully you're going to sell something. Yeah. If you go door to door, as many doors as you hit, that's going to be your outcome. Yeah. So, Ooh, boom. Boom. Take that, Volvo, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then your mom? Um. So, my just wanting to add to that like I'll I used to do like always like in my um, like semester break and holidays I was always working at my dad's like like it's not his company he runs it but he has like higher higher people high, 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 higher people like uh, investors and stuff uh, so I don't want to brag that he owns it but um, I love like he's really my inspiration in terms of being so enthusiastic about what he's doing for work and mm -hmm. like he's an amazing boss like he really has this like emotional intelligence and um yeah to like you know create cool team events to like basically make his passion his purpose and just gets all these v-dubs like he has whole like almost vintage collection of i don't know how many buses he have right wow. now that he actually uses for like marketing purposes is doing like old timer rallies with it for you know for clients and he's just this way of like being so driven and 
this is saying like when you do what you love you never have to work a single day of your life and uh, yeah i just love to see how excited he gets and it's not like that he's counting down his days to retirement like he actually wants to work as long as he possibly could because he's have uh, he's having so much fun like that's amazing um i've never seen him like obviously there are some you know, tougher days at the office some yeah, like yeah, yeah. less pleasant conversations or decisions to make but um overall like he loves what he's doing like he's excited when he comes back home and he's not burned out and uh yeah and this just like really showed me also that he never w goes to work in a suit and tie and mm -hmm. he's still like a successful business guy yeah, yeah, yeah. and i like i'm totally sidetracking but that was my motivation when i studied business and my first semester we were volunteering at this like big big business conference and all my friends were so impressed by all these people like from the top big five companies rocking up in suits and be like oh, one day i want to be like them and i was just like i'm 18 i'm in my first semester and i looked at those people and i'm like you can be very proud for what you build up but i totally like this is not what i aspire to have in my life mm -hmm. this is not like the goal this is not for me and then i was like well just having my dad coming to mind i'm like well there's a way to be successful and doing what you love and like to you know like make a good income by a hundred percent like being yourself being authentic like rock up in your in woo, rock up, <laughs> woo, 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 rock up in your like sneakers or yeah. converse and like wearing fucked up jeans if you feel like it and like it's about who you are and not like what, what you, you wear. do yeah. what you wear is yeah. it are you wearing the suit or suit is wearing you oh wow yeah Boom, baby. totally yeah, yeah. And then it, that was such a misconception. I remember for a long time I was yeah. thinking that's the the power yeah. suit, the power yeah. stair, the the no. power. You know, it's like what's behind it? Yeah, yeah, what's behind it? And also like how we've been just so like kind of, you know, fed that and that yeah. that is the way. Yeah. This is how you're successful. This yeah. is, and for me it took much longer to realize that yeah. you were so lucky with your dad that you know someone could show you that yeah. and mentor so. you. Like in my case, and I can just literally quote my dad. He would mm. say work job is not supposed to be fun wow. that was the okay, way so my totally not my good. mom i was very lucky with my mom because she she was a journalist for whatever 30 20 years and she had her own magazine mm -hmm. and uh, even though it, they she still was treated like it's my job but it was like she owned the magazine she, you can see there's a passion like and yeah. then she she's so excited when the new new one is released and yeah. my dad had none of that yeah so like, when i was looking at my mom and now i can so relate and it's so funny that my mom still doesn't know that i do podcasts or whatever because I, I blocked her from all my social media because one time i posted <laughs> Sorry, something she thought that i'm drunk and i'm posting it all over and then i was like listen i'm not dealing with this and i'm just gonna block you and then talk to you on, on whatsapp but i feel so similar like now when i release new podcasts yeah. you know and that feels like that is my baby that's like yeah. all the work I, I invested in all the things i learned you know about myself about other people and then when it, i released it i was just that's how i felt like when my mom would release a magazine yeah. and i yeah. can relate to that and i'm mommy's boy as well so like yeah. my, me and my dad we didn't have much in common yeah but uh, that is incredible that your, your dad yeah. was, you yeah. know, such inspiration. Yeah. And um, and I still, I would go to my dad saying, like, I just did not want to mm. represent the values of what my dad was representing. Mm. So Sometimes it's like a good reminder also to have someone that incorporates everything you don't want. And it's like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I see whatever you do and I do the opposite. Exactly. It's like, and just a reminder. Of one of the biggest motivations my dad gave to me was one day I came home with uh, uh, grades and uh, my mom would look, look at the grade report and she was like, oh, the physics like it was like four or five out of ten, which yeah. is really shit. And she would say to my father, saying like, look, your son, you know, this is the, his yeah. marks. And my dad looked at me. And he said, son, I'm going to be so happy that you stay home. Don't go to study in university. Don't go anywhere. I need a helper here in the farm. Oh, my God. And I was like, like, this is the biggest motivation. The biggest motivation ever. And study all night. I literally, that was that night I would just go and study yeah. and study. I was like, this is, and it's so funny, like, in these different ways. Like, my dad, he's a, he was a very, like, accomplished and, uh, like, very talented, but struggled with, like, the alcohol and all that stuff. Yeah. But there's certain things what I learned from him I just kept for like all my everything life. Everything I don't want to be. <laughs> exactly. What about your mom? Um, so my mom works as a secretary in a bank mm -hmm. and like uh, she's been doing that since she's I think 18, <laughs> 19. What? Yeah. Um, funnily for her, it's like reverse. She's like she has an app on her phone that is like a reverse countdown for when she can retire. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 
So, um, yeah, for me, that's a good reminder to, like, find, uh, you know, do some work that actually, like, triggers that inner smile and that you enjoy that's doing because I don't want to have an app on my phone that's counting back the days until I retire. And when you say your mom and dad are, like, quite opposite? And um, maybe you call them yin and yang. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, but, like, let's say I'm... I'm She's very, as she's working in a bank, she's like very switched on with like finances and is always making sure like, you know, keeping, when my dad is like loving to live life and like, let's say like it's not like over living over his expenses, but he just mm -hmm. really like embraces enjoying life. My mom is always the one who like, you know, puts it back together. And it's like, we need to like, you know, fix the house and do this and that. Mm. So, so that's the dreamer, the flyer. And my and mom, mom is, is the grounding one. Yeah. And then, and they're still together. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just that, celebrated their 30th wedding anniversary wow. two weeks ago. But opposite, yeah. what do you think about the concept of opposites attract? Um, or okay. different attract. I won't say opposite. I don't like yeah. the opposite. It's not like when someone is very happy and the yeah. other one has to like be <laughs> like sad. Yeah, be, 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 be and a depressed person. No, it's like very different, <laughs> I would say. Yeah. yeah. I think um, I call it more like complement each other. Mm. You know, I feel like it's more of a, yeah, yin and yang. Like if you, it's like building bricks to ultimately become this powerhouse of like make two people basically making each other the best version they can be so if mm -hmm. one is the creative brain and the other one is like the strategic one bring that together and you create like this powerhouse effect i just realized one of the cameras died but that's fine Oop. the camera on you died but we still have this one it's fine we good we good yeah yeah okay. let's just finish this thought okay um so yeah i do feel like they really complement each other i have moments in my life and um, Mom, I love you, but there were moments in my life where I was like, I, I can't believe they're still together because yeah. I'm like basically the female version of my dad, just like 30 years younger. So we are one brain. We even did like the Maya Briggs personality test out of 16 personalities. We're the exact same. So he like totally gets me and I totally get him. So sometimes when they like have argues that you just have in every marriage, I'm like, how can you like, how can they still be together? Like I. I'm not sure if I'd be able wow. to do that, but like I think there are a lot of things that I don't see how they can actually balance out a yeah. relationship when can complement each other. And uh, yeah, I think my mom is probably like the not always the most constructive, but like one of the few real critics I have in my life that sometimes I could just like slam the door and it makes me angry. But in the other hand, in some ways, it's also like a way to like kick your ass and be mm, like mm. Uh, I'm gonna show you that I can make this work and like even if you want me to marry a man from my from the village and you know like have a 40 40 hours work week in the like in a corporate office like it's just the motivator of like also showing what you don't want yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's what I got yeah. and then it's so interesting yeah. like we I think our opposite, our families yeah. are very similar in that yeah. perspective mom and dad also very opposite very yeah. like such a yeah. I wouldn't say in and yan because in and yan actually is, isn't it black and white like positive yeah. negative yeah I wouldn't go that far like I would just compliment yeah just yeah. complimenting and so yeah. different like my dad's energy was very similar to mine yeah in general but like then I have I'm so lucky that I have my mom's like kind of figuring out when to put the brakes yeah. on yeah. so if my dad would party till he drops I would mm -hmm. party but then they're like, uh oh, like, I think mom, I'm boy's coming in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I got a podcaster, really. Exactly, yeah. and um, and uh, yeah, in that perspective, very lucky to have yeah. that d difference. Yeah. And it's funny that you mentioned about Myers Briggs system because I actually, when I lived in Canada, I went yeah. to their office. Yeah, I went to their office in Calgary. So when I was creating this concept of helping youngsters to figure out what they want to do in their lives, yeah. Uh, so the first step was to figure helping figure out what's the personality type. Yeah. And so whatever yeah. other programs we had in here in in Europe, they were quite quite like. Um, not very sophisticated, not very in detail. And Myers Briggs was just full on, yeah. like, and that was the. the yeah. So I read the book. There's a Myers Briggs book when they talk about and they, who 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 wrote them. I already forgot. It was that mom and Maya the, Briggs. Like, <laughs> the daughter, there was a, I think. Yeah, daughter and yeah. the mother, like they created yeah. together, and then. But long story short, so I end up being in this office uh, and they're like, who the fuck are you? And it's like, oh, I just came from, uh, you know, just to find out if I could implement this and use this for my website. Yeah. And I was like, where, where did you came from? Um, I'm from Latvia. You came from Latvia all the way all here the to way Myers Briggs place. Before remote like, work was a thing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, I just live in Canada and I thought I'm going to visit you. But they said straight away, no, there's no way we can do, it's very expensive to do it and okay. all that stuff. It's very pricey. Ooh. Okay, we're going to move to the next segment. We're going to talk okay. about books and all that stuff. All right. Boom. Just one 
No, can I add one more thing? <laughs> of course you can. <laughs> okay, like one last thing that really helped me uh, when like sometimes I think my mom and me are complete opposites. Mm. But what really helped me was like when I, it was like a major click point when I realized that I just have to translate her love language. And uh. that is based on different that's based on a different value system for her i think one of the core values is safety so my lifestyle was like completely like intangible for her that i'm like not go to an office and i like work from like cafes or like co-working space in bali where there's like no proper like industry and stuff and it's like but you have a master's degree you know like you can be wasting your potential and stuff like that but when I realized that that's not her trying to put me down and like, you know, making me feel bad, it's just her need for safety mm. and her willingness that I have like a, you know, like a good life and like a good income can, you know, like take care of everything. Um, then I was like, oh, well, that's just her way in expressing it, which is might might not be the way I would bring it across, but it's meant with like the best intention. Best so. intention. It's all about the intentions yeah. in the back, 100%. Yeah. Talking about masters and like for me, uh, being a go-go dancer in Canada on a gay club, yeah. that's, my, been that's proud. my parents were so proud. <laughs> Yeah. Like, Look, mom, we just got all this like fifty dollar. <laughs> <laughs> all of that sweaty and lovely. I like it. <laughs> this is recording. I'm and back. I'm back. I suppose to say I'm back. Okay. We back. <laughs> I'll be back. I'm back. Choo. <laughs> don't use that sound much today. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> talking about mom and dad, in and Yan, different parents. So we uh, we figured out that both of our parents are kind of similar in that sense. And then I liked when you said like I'm such a mommy's boy, mommy's girl, uh, well, but daddy's sorry, daddy's girl, and I'm mommy's boy. I love mom too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you hearing that? Hundred <laughs> percent. But the, with the idea that my not be who I am. In my family her. was exactly the same. Yeah. My sister was uh, dad's yeah. g- uh, dad's girl, and I was like my. And yeah. It was. I, when I was younger, I just thought, oh, this is not cool. Like, mm. I'm just such a, like, what does it mean? I'm sissy or something. <laughs> but it's just these energies that, yeah. like, what we kind of, you know, and, and it, I think the tendency is that the male, uh, like the boys. Always like the opposite sons, gender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Opposite gender, yeah. exactly. It's very interesting. Okay. Enough about the family. Okay. Um, so we kind of touched upon that. It was pretty cool. <laughs> we love the family is awesome. Yeah. And uh, now we're going to talk about some books. So we uh, the segment mm, is about. They put my my my, my glasses on. Your glasses <laughs> my on. My imaginary glasses. <laughs> so out of the three books you sent to me on that yeah. fantastic piece of paper, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my offline WhatsApp message. Exactly. <laughs> Was uh, so the only book I actually got uh, got through was the Dalai Lama's book, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, wow, it is uh, certain va- certain things where they were talking about, and th- one of the main was the, the happiness. What yeah. is happiness? What is when do you you know? And it's such an interesting subject because like uh, we, I think especially like when we were younger, we were we led to believe that certain things gonna make us happy. Yeah. You know, it's money, it's the, the good job, it's yeah. the it's the good wife, it's all those like things. And then you goals. and then you realize oh my god, there's so got long. it all and you're like Yeah. That wasn't it. That wasn't <laughs> and that's it. when you get depressed. Yeah, and the biggest thing yeah. was just like if you can't be happy and comfortable with your own skin, yeah. there's nothing and no one can help you. And you have to yeah. do what makes you happy and enj- yeah. and you enjoy it and no. all that. So tell me about your take from from this book. I just want to reframe and basically it also says like no external goal can ever fill an inner void. You know, if you try to feel like uh, numb feelings from inside with like a fancy car, Mm. like a lot of money, like if there's something lacking inside, it's not going to fill that void. So you need to go down to the source. And it's scary because we don't want to go to the source. We don't want to do the discovery. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And I, I think I probably for men it's one of the biggest ones because they yeah. just don't want to admit that they're weak or they're yeah, well, making themselves vulnerable, vulnerable. Yeah. exactly and uh, I, d- I definitely know i have that struggle yeah. you know and eventually <coughs> probably i need to see a shrink <laughs> <laughs> and there goes the voice, <laughs> yeah, there's the voice. <laughs> I guess it's just say like it out loud <laughs> uh, my throat um yeah the book the first one i sent over was the art of happiness by the dalai lama and uh, the subtitle is a handbook for living and actually that's what exactly what it is for me so i feel like it's my um i mean i was baptized as christian but for me it is like the holy bible because it basically 
it doesn't tell you what's right and wrong so there are no rules to live mm. by it's more like um preaching like values of what it takes to you know, be a good person to like a live a happy and fulfilled life that is like um yeah contentment you know that just puts this like smile on your face it's not like just temporary joy or like you know short happiness it's really like how to create a life that just makes happiness like a, a journey and not like a final goal so mm. you don't wake up and think like oh if i get that i'll be happy and i think that's what a lot of people think um that that that's how you achieve happiness is by always like achieving the next goal and then you'll be happy it's it's about enjoying enjoying journey like being a good human being kind compassionate like um connect with other people like really like fuel yourself up from the inside and find this inner peace and and, and calmness inner and peace then, and yeah. peace and 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 potatoes peace and peace <laughs> inner peace <laughs> the german accent inner peace baby wait, wait, how do you say it correctly peace peace Pe- no inner inner peace peace but sound like you said in the peas. <laughs> yeah, I do talk about the peas. <laughs> yeah. Um because you're so hangry, hungry mm-hmm. right now. I am. <laughs> I'm thinking this microphone is an ice cream. No. Um yeah, definitely with the with the, how do you for your in your case, did you figure it out how to fill up that inner void or how to just make yourself be happy? Um and how w- how did you do it? Yeah. What what did you do? I mean, let's say like I'm 28, so probably I haven't figured it all out. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) would be not sad if I did, but I feel like I'm definitely like on the right path Mm -hmm. um, in terms of living a life true to myself and not like a life like others expect of me, which is actually like the number one regret of dying people is like living a life that pleases other people, but then you forget the most important important person in your life, which is yourself. Um, So yeah, I basically. I think I'm pretty good at tuning in with what feels right for me and feels like in tech in, in integrity and in alignment and whatever doesn't. And if I feel like this is something that doesn't put like this inner smile on my face, um, I go down to the source. I'm like, what is it that I don't enjoy about this part? And it doesn't mean I'm only doing like pleasant things. I'm just like, woo, 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 like a little unicorn floating over <laughs> a green grass area. And like, that's not it. But I'm always like checking in with my why. Mm-mm. I think the why is the most powerful, infinite source of energy that y- that really makes you thrive and like put in these extra hours of work and like, really having this higher purpose and vision in life that just, you know, gets you, fuels you up and gets you going. Um, so I think I weirdly came up pretty early with that. I think I even asked my dad when I was 16, I was like, so dad, you're selling tires. What's the purpose? In life? <laughs> you know? And then he was like, well, I don't see my purpose in selling tires. I see my purpose in like creating workspaces that feed families. So everyone who like I can hire, like, you know, can assure that they put food on the table for their families. And that's the purpose I see. Um, So I was tuned in very early with this question of like, but what's the bigger thing? You know, what am I doing it for? It's like, is it just to uh, um, live in this hamster wheel and like uh, get through life? Mm-hmm. Or is there like any contribution with my God-given talent that I can use to like make a positive impact in the world? And I think once you found that, that is actually something that at least makes me intrinsically very, very happy to feel like I got a direction in life, I got a path, and that feels very in alignment with my value system, with like my skills maybe because i just as you've noticed i love to talk a lot <laughs> no meeting new people i'm like is there any way i can and live my life up to the fullest and if there's any way i can use that to inspire other people to do the same then i feel like i found my purpose and um yeah i think for me that's uh definitely one of the core um is that uh, the core point core things that i did in my life that generate this this inner peace and inner happiness and the Dalai Lama book is really such a, a handbook for living that shows you like that's what life is all about like the meaning of life is happiness and then mm. it's up to you to find your way of like 
figuring out whatever, yeah, whatever it is, is that your makes you happiness happy. and that that's what yeah. you should put your energy in into yeah. figuring out that happiness yeah. the reason why I was just clicking around here I was one actually found uh, I don't think that's one of them so Will Smith has a pretty cool way um, uh, to uh, his grandma basically told him mm-hmm. um, like w- you need to figure out whatever is your biggest talent yeah. and what you can do and figure out how you can contribute yeah. to society using your biggest yeah. talent I and think that's um, a, P- a Pablo Picasso um, quote. He actually said, like, if you use your passion in the service of others, it becomes your purpose. Mm, that's that's cool. very n- just nicer. Yeah, that's yeah. very nice to, <laughs> wha- nice way to put it. And now let's figure out how Will Smith ran the Because I, th- I think also, like, the there's an interesting... Uh, in my head, I think there's a little bit difference because I know there are some people who can be very talented in a certain area, but they're not passionate about it. Yeah, that's a very interesting one. Like that's someone can be amazing with numbers and yeah. whatever, and they would be accountant, yeah, or whatever. But I think it's they could be talented that they just need to figure out maybe different way yeah. to uh, use that talent. Finally, it's actually called the ikigai principle. I don't oh, know okay. if you heard of that. What do you, what like do you say? Ikigai. It's a Japanese, um, basically like a Japanese. What is that like system mm-hmm. value core whatever? Okay. Um, so they did this whole like research why there's so many centennials, like people who get older than 100 years in Japan. Um, so they found out they all um, find the ikigai, which is basically finding out your purpose, which is based on four pillars, like based on four main questions you have to answer and then find the intersection of these four. So one, the first question is like, what do you enjoy doing? What are you good at? So that can be numbers, but you don't enjoy doing it, you know. And then third one is what um, does the world need? And fourth one is how can I monetize it? And if you find the intersection of these four, then this is your purpose in life. What do you mean by how can I monetize it? Like how can you find a way to make a living from it? Or uh, how can okay. you make money from that? I'm so. uh, My face is smiling now because... I did very similar thing when I was doing door-to-door sales and at some point I just sat in the park and I had tears in my eyes yeah. and I was like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Because yeah. I'm walking from this house to the house and like, you know, amount of times you get turned down and like someone is yeah. going to give you a snarly comment and yeah. like w- things like that. And I remember I sat down, I had tears in my eyes and I just remember there's this concept of you just need to take a white piece of paper and just write things what you really like to yeah. do and then figure out how you can combine yeah. them to that thing what you could do. Yeah. And then it's literally what you just mentioned, like uh, find things what you really like, mm-hmm. what figure out what you're really good at yeah. and then how you can help with pe- for yeah. people. Yeah. So that was that concept of like creating that website for youngsters because uh, I remember I really struggled after high school. I didn't know what the fuck I want to yeah. do. And I was saying to my mom, like, I think I want to be a journalist and I yeah. want to get into that, that area. But also I knew that my writing was so shit. And I was like, I would be struggling to be conventional those days, like journalist. And my mom would say like, oh, you just need to do something serious. And that's why I started yeah. business. And yeah, that is a very interesting how. And then and then how the fourth one, how I can make, make yeah. money out of it. Yeah, because I that's mean, crazy. they're different overlaps if. One is like, uh, what does the world need? What am I good at? I think that's kind of like your mission and like make the world a better place, but you're not making an income from that. Um, If you make an income and something, whatever, it's like different overlaps if you have uh, two of them. Um, But yeah, like ultimately only the intersection Mm. of these four really help you to... (laughs) live your purpose yeah and yeah. when you said about other things sometimes you don't like s- to do certain things but that is that a part of your goal is that yeah. a part it does it help to your goal obviously like for you there's certain kind of maybe boring <laughs> marketing things you need to do or you need to do figure out how to ship all that stuff Run and like speed dating events yeah, <laughs> yeah and stru- exactly. struggle with exactly. like figuring out um how you know you're gonna import export to certain countries mm-hmm. and all that you know some kind of a uh, like for me now, mm-hmm. like I need to edit videos and I need mm-hmm. to do all of this. But I think the question is like, figure out how you're going to sort those things out. Yeah. Like, so now I'm literally a couple of days ago, talked to potential future producer who's yeah. going to help me to do those things. And that's yeah. your answer. Yeah. Because it's, uh, it is shame when someone doesn't do things what they really want to do because they find that kind of a obstacle and yeah. they haven't figured out how to manage it and it. what to do with it. Yeah. So they're, and then, then this is the thing like, for a long time now, 
I don't even know how to give excuses anymore. Yeah. When I lived in Latvia and I was surrounded by people, I heard all the time people would have excuses. Yeah. It's like, why didn't you go to a train? Oh, well, because of this or this. Why we d- didn't travel? Why didn't explore? Because of the, my wife, because of my kids. Because now, I, if anyone I can blame, it's myself. Yeah. That's it. There's no other ones. Yeah. So crazy. Okay, that's first book. We have two more <laughs> to go. Book. But I didn't didn't get to the other two books. So what do we have there? This one, what is this? The Click yeah. or Captivate. Like, I couldn't decide which one I was going to go for. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're pretty much, like, very similar in what they're talking about. And it's more of, like, um, yeah, how to make these quality connections in life. And, like, um, Captivate is more about, like, how to hold, like, a sparking conversation. And The Click is about this magic that we have with some people when you just, like, literally having the click and you're like i just met you but it feels like we're just vibing mm. and how you can create more of that what's like um the psychological effect of why you feel like more connected to some people than to others it's maybe because they have like something similar they share the same they share the same first name or like you know they come from the same country like oh we're connected because we share like a similarity same values yeah. same values um vulnerability connects like opening up to people and not just showing like your happy face but actually being like wow that really scared me or that really you know just this experience of being a human is Mm -hmm. like the glue that connects and i mean as you can tell i'm all about uh connecting clicking clicking and i'm like i don't want to do that for the sake of uh you know like having uh, knowing a lot of people just like quantity over quality i want to have quality connections Mm -hmm. like i love flow conversations like figuring out what makes people five like cracking them open in a way that feels like very authentic and i'm like well maybe there's just some tools that you need in life to reach that depth so i'm like i want to use my fullest potential to get as much out of a conversation as i possibly can and like those two books really helped me to you know create this magic and like skip the small talk and dig deeper yeah because also like we are we are very limited with our time and with the people who we can have around yeah because like books like tribe sapiens they're talking about this uh this those are my like one of the favorite latest books they talk about how we are in this like multinational humongous society we have millions of people in one stuffed in one one city yeah. but our capacity is very limited in exactly. who we can con- communicate and connect mm. and when we used to live in those little tribes yeah. and that was the feeling what i had in gilly by the way and yeah. i kept saying even though yeah. i was high yeah. as fuck i was just even saying like i feel like we're in a tribe we're yeah. just dancing we're just vibing and i could just yeah. see that as all like i remember like i would step back i would say i would see you uh, then was uh, Masili was in front and there was other girl it felt like and then it was like some other some boys around yeah. it felt like we have this tribe dance mm. we have three female kind of like doing their <laughs> thing the boys are doing <laughs> their thing head on. yeah <laughs> it was just like kind of it just felt like we we're so connected and it was great because there was not a lot of people yeah that's because true. and then la- later when we went to that big party we just yeah. upset that you guys left me <laughs> then you guys just disappeared that's and I would come and I would come in I would just yeah. see all these like strangers and I felt yeah. like this is not the tribe anymore and what i'm trying to say with that is just we do we are limited with the people and we want to have quality people in our lives instead of just like being you know my problem sometimes is i'm like this natural pleaser in a sense of like i just want to that everyone is happy that everyone is laughing that everyone like this and then i end up kind of upsetting people because i would say yes to this party yes to that party and which i'm again trying to get better with this and then i'm now really pay attention who i actually want to spend time with you know so i think that's one one. of the lessons that you learn as you grow older i I can imagine we're pretty much pretty similar on that like in my early 20s i was like i want to connect with everyone Mm -hmm. you know i love making friends i love meeting people and then eventually i was like well who actually like fits to me like who's you know who do i want to invest in um and yeah and then you kind of become a bit more selective of who you're spending your time with to make sure you're not only having these weak ties you know like people that you know is like quantity over quality and yeah like and then there's vampires as well who suck your energy, energy out instead of like yeah. they actually adding something yeah, to you absolutely and it's it's interesting when you wake up to that and then especially when you know a lot of people and like 
wow, like, <laughs> who are those people who actually, like, mm. make me live with more energy than I came with? Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. And who are the people that just, I think I'm pretty good at not letting them drain my energy, but I notice when I feel like I need to build up this, like, warrior protection wall to make yeah, sure yeah, it yeah. doesn't affect me. And then I'm just, like, I'm not getting anything out of this conversation yeah. I, like I really stay away from like yeah the, uh, the complainers yeah yeah people who complain i just have no space and yeah. i and right now at the moment i am actually uh, uh, working with one of one of those guys you and don't like want to say any names no ah. and he's probably not going to listen to this anyways <laughs> but the idea is that uh, every time i would have a meeting whatever it's like how many times you can complain about this girlfriend about this yeah. about this yeah <sighs> it's just like yeah. you know it and and there's not much yeah. I can add to it. It's just stay Nothing. away from those yeah. people pretty much. But deep down, I feel sorry for them because yeah. I'm just like, wow, like I just have to endure that for the time we're hanging out. But you have to deal with it like every second of your life, like seeing everything is negative and complaining and seeing like problems where others see, opp see opportunities. And mm. it must be so exhausting just having this. It's a waste of time as yeah. well. Like Energy when I when I did my, my thingy, right? Yeah. That was the biggest mistake to post that on. on uh, I posted like, oh yeah, I, I was on my way to yeah. surf and then this happened. So many people would yeah. ask me, what happened? It's yeah. like the shark bite me. Like yeah. anyways, but when you post something positive when yeah. I'm jumping around or doing something, yeah. no one gives a fuck. They're yeah. like, oh, well, the same. But when someone offers you, when someone gets yeah. in trouble, they're True. like, oh, you okay? You fine? Yeah, like, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, which is nice. But yeah. it's also like asking question, are you okay? After you already posted yeah, that you're, like, I'm, still alive. I'm still alive kind of thing, yeah. you know? Okay, next book, next book. Surround Surrounded by Idiots. Ooh, <laughs> I love the title. Um, it's funny because I wasn't expecting we're going to touch base on the Maya Bricks, but that's basically um, based on the DISC personality test. So instead of 16 personalities, it just um, brings it down to like four main personality types. Um, so the idea is that we think we're surrounded by idiots because when they have like a different personality type, different style of communication, we think they're just weird and we don't get them. But once we figure out that people like just tick in a different way, it's like some people might be more analytical, others might be more like task driven and others might be more like relationship driven. That has like their motivation stems from a different intention. Mm. And therefore, like, uh, you know, we, we just have a different way of dealing with certain challenges. That one was really related to, to business, but obviously you can like um, extend them to like the bigger picture terms of relationships and and friendships and um so basically how it works is just um putting people <laughs> in like four different categories mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um based on two axes so one is um task oriented um and um yeah task oriented and the other uh, bottom line is uh, relationship oriented so whatever is your focus and then from left to right, it goes to, um, I think, like introverted and um, reactive. And on the right side, you have um, extroverted and proactive, yeah. so the doers. Um, so then you find on the top left, um, it's like the blue people. They're very analytical. Mm -hmm. So they're task-oriented and introverted. So they're like the, the data people who like really love their spreadsheets and mm -hmm. like perfectionists and very strategic. Um, and then on the same side for the extroverts, we have like the goal oriented, like dominant, like bosses who like want to get shit done and like mm -hmm. almost become like aggressive and like really like this extroverted personalities who just want to hit goals like the salespeople, for instance, which is good for them to have. And then um, bottom left, we have relationship um, oriented and introverted people who are more like uh, love to practice a routine and like bring peace and harmony and like, you know, don't want to disturb anyone, but kind of make sure everyone's having snacks. It's like 90% like in Ubud, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably find a lot of green people in Ubud. Um, and then you have the bottom right, which are extroverted people who are into relationships. Um, and this is Myers Briggs system, so you're um, talking about. No, it's called the DISC personality test, which is like a different one. But and who is it by Myers, or that's nothing to no, do with them? No, it's nothing to do with that. Mm. It's just like a different. Because Myers was test. like they they had a four 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 main types, and it was yeah. all about the percentage which one you have yeah. fusion between. Because yeah. in Europe, I remember when also I was graduating in high school, we would have a, such a basic, you know, just saying yeah. like, well, you're introvert or extrovert, yeah, yeah. and this and this, and they had a no in 
depth analytics yeah. like yeah. what is in between yeah and there's just mixture heard, yeah. just like our sexualities you yeah. know so so men men or uh female or male that would have some feminine side like yeah. m- masculine side and so so more and more they talk about how females they the female they would have that uh, masculine side as yeah. well of them and um yeah it's great that someone is actually looking yeah. into that in depth yeah and like helps you to understand yourself better and other people as well like i think we're so prone to project like whatever we think is the right way to act we're like we're expecting everyone to think the exact same mm, way about mm. it but that just makes you realize like no there are different ways to interpret it and if one of your values is like perfection which is not really mine yeah. um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um uh, i'm there with you honey <laughs> you know and it's like um, I now understand and like I accept that for them it's important but then I also accept that I'm a different personality type I'm yellow like I'm enthusiastic I love people I love like um, being creative and like I'm a social person and I respect if other people are not but then if you especially for teams like if you work together you need all of them you cannot mm. just have four yellow people in a yeah, team yeah, that be then nothing gets done yeah, you know exactly. you need to have someone who's like goal driven <laughs> but then you need someone who like keeps up the harmony and someone who brings in like this this fresh energy to you know come up with new ideas and like yeah that's and that's like going back to like we were talking moms and dads yeah you know exactly. our families like, like complement each other. so different yeah, yeah. That's books. So, yeah. Okay, that was the boring side. Now we're going to talk <laughs> about something more fun. Movies. Movies. Yes, Movie. man. Oh, my God. I can quote that whole film. Uh, love Jim Carrey and Yes, man. And that whole idea that you just can't say. An, uh, no. Just not, you can't. Don't say the N-word. Yeah, you just can't say N-word. But also, like, this fil- this one f- is very similar to the uh, Liar Liar. Yeah. Where you can't say lies. Yeah. Um, but Yes, man. Oh, my God. That film was so cool. Did, did you know that it was based on a true story? By Danny Wallace, who but was like, um, he basically wrote a novel about his own project of saying like yes to everything mm. for six months. And then based on that, they actually did the Yes Men, um, which I think the most important message in that um, is like saying yes more, but don't say yes to everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's what at the end he, yeah. he kind of realized. So yeah. I, I'm going to say yes to this because I want to do it, yeah. not because I'm because supposed to say that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's like don't say yes to be a people pleaser and like do things that you don't enjoy doing, but say yes more so new opportunities can arise and, you know, like saying yes to... Okay, a question. Yeah? Out of that film, what do you think you would like to try what, th- uh, what they were trying to do and did yes thing? Mm. I probably, huh, definitely the going to the airport and like booking of it. You knew that. Because <laughs> that's what I was just starting to think about. Uh, it's such a great concept. Yeah. You just come to the airport, just yeah. rock up like and whatever is the next to, flight yeah. and then whatever yeah. money you have, yeah. that's the budget, that's the yeah. next flight. That would be so cool. I did it once with my uh, one of my best friends back home. We did like a blind booking trip. Mm. So you knew it like a few weeks in advance, but like um, they just give you like a... Like a package, it's like the adventure destinations, the shopping and party destinations, whatever. And then there's like 12 different cities that you can fly to and you just select a date. And I think excluding one um, costs like 10 euros extra or something. So basically, if you want to go on a cheap, is it like 66 euros trip? You just have to keep them all in the pool. And then we were like, all right, press the button, booking the flights. And uh, we went to Prague. Which is amazing. There you go. You Prague know? is beautiful. It's Prague beautiful. is actually very similar to like Riga, the old city. Yeah. yeah. It's very similar. And it's destination for a lot of uh, uh, stack dues uh, from UK. So you can see <laughs> yeah. a lot of drunk Brits walking One around and yelling. And stuff. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. Yes, man, is great. Um, Fantastic. And then next one is the inside out, is it? No, what uh, is nope. it? We have the invention of lying. In the between. invention of lying with yeah. the, uh, Ricky Gervais. And yeah. that film was just so cool. The world is uh, existing without people lying or yeah. capable of being lying yeah. uh, to lie. And then Ricky was at the bank and he just all of a sudden, he was asked the question, how much money you have left in your yeah. account? And he gave the, the system was down so you could give him any number. Yeah, yeah, and he did. And something happened with his brain and yeah. all of a sudden he realized he can lie. I think my favorite bit is when he uh, passed by this girl. The woman, this I knew it. I was like the same scene as like the world is like about to end. <laughs> that hot, hot chick was like uh, passing by. Totally not not interested. League, you know? By yeah. the world's about to end and the only way to, uh, uh, to, um, to save it is for us to have sex. 
oh, do we have time for a hotel or we should do it now here? <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> so let's do it in a hotel. But then he pretends to have a phone call because he's like still you know, in tune with his moral system and he's like, I can't. And then he's like picking up. He's like, oh, NASA, the world is not going to end. And she's like, now we have to celebrate. <laughs> you know? So then he actually got her. But um, what, kind, what kind of message do we get from that? Um, I think it's a good reminder to show us how many times a day we lying. we're lying. When they're just brutally honest. When she's like, oh, actually, like they're going on a first date. And she's just instantly telling him, I'm sorry, I don't find you attractive. And I don't mm. think like... Um, this is gonna lead to something, but you know, let's just get a dinner for free or something. Yeah, and when she was on the phone, she's like, "Oh, he's like, here now. He's quite fat." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, we wouldn't say that, but like, how often do we have these? But would we like to hear that kind of That's stuff? Fun fact: I can that question is like, would you like to wor- live in a world where people would just express their completely honest thoughts like all the time? And I think um, there's this differentiation between like, I think two or three types of lies. Like white lies are the lies that like didn't give you any like benefit or advantage it's just to make the other person feel better Mm -hmm. and then what is it the black or red lies or something is i think black lies that you just uh, use to your own benefit. Black lives matter? No. <laughs> Black oh, lives shit. matter. <laughs> 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 but it's like, you know, if you you just getting like uh, an advantage out of it, but then definitely like making the other p- person yeah, yeah, feel yeah. worse. Um, so yeah, I think you don't necessarily have to tell someone they look very fat. Mm. Um, it's okay to keep that for yourself unless that person is asking for it. <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, I think we should be better at effective communication like speaking up more to avoid like any sort of conflict because i think a lot of conflict just happens because there's like emotions suppressed and like things not being said when it should be said yeah but the framing like but also the pleasing thing but uh, we already mm-hmm. touched upon earlier so like when i say like i'm quite like try to please people like yeah. be so try to say like oh i'm gonna do this and that and this and this is gonna be fantastic and I can see I regret it afterwards so bad. And I, f- I feel bad to say someone like, oh, yeah, we're going to do wakeboarding together yeah. next week. I didn't even look up my schedule, yeah. nothing. And I just said yes to yeah. it. And then day comes closer. I was like, oh, sorry, actually, yeah. I had a plan. So yeah. you should just check first before you yeah. give the answer. Yeah. And, uh, and just be honest, like, that you don't want to hang out with them. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you tell them in a nice yeah, I have way. more important things to do. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, I, got, I have to say I got better at this because I used to say, like, yes to everything. <laughs> mm. um, like, nothing that would, you know, against my value system, but, like, just saying yes to new people, new opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, as I get, like, older and wiser, I really feel like I'm, and maybe touch base on that, that I feel I became more selective who I spent my time with. And like, especially now that this is, we call it new era of Bali when they just opened up the borders and like a lot of new people coming in. And like a lot of those new people, which I totally understand, are very open to connect and like make new friends. But I'm like, now I'm like, I don't want to invest in people that unless we're having the click. But if I know they're leaving in two weeks anyways, I'm like, Mm. I do have great friends here, like quality relationships that I want to invest in instead of going on like, five different brunch meetings with people yeah, I've just yeah, met. Yeah, yeah. It's like a better have like five conversations with the same person and like really get to know them on a deeper level. Because it's crazy how lev- uh, how many layers we have as well. Yeah. Like people who we know for a while, you know, this is a good yeah. example as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, about us in sen- in sense of like uh, what did you know about me when you met me last year yeah. and what do you know about me now and like so many times like before I, this podcast yeah I always <laughs> like pop up and, and Nini's uh, radar from nowhere he's like comes to him and like what are you doing here yeah, it's like, I how, know how did how you get here groups we I was like yeah common. I touched the chip to your leg and I'm just <laughs> following you <laughs> <It's> like, oh. <laughs> okay this is another segment another 30 minutes are gone we're gonna do one more finish okay. about books and, and, and people in a second we uh, are back as we keep doing it oh my god you keep doing that you're announcing the show mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen we're back <laughs> <laughs> it's like in that film um the anchorman when they as a I, which i obviously don't know don't because know because don't you know don't know watch movie. films yeah because they they're basically they the two hosts and they hated each other guts and they because they used to be lovers and then they basically sign out mm-hmm. and then they say like one says uh, stay classy planet uh, stay classy san diego and then the I actually the, know yeah, that one. Yeah, and then it was like something, something, San Diego. It's like, but stay classy. <laughs> that was just like, stay classy. And they were just going back and forth. And we're back. So the other one. <laughs> 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 
And you. in getting a laugh from a so, stand-up comedian means a lot. <laughs> hey. So those books, and also when we talked about the uh, the um, invention of flying, that yeah. really resonated with the other film like Liar Liar, which I already yeah. mentioned with. Yeah. Um, That's why I was like, which one? Are with go Jim for? Carrey, because I love when Carrey. that when he I love, I love him. I love psychedelics. <laughs> oh my god! I did not say that. My si- silly got in our brains. This girl, she kept repeating in the Gilly Islands uh, that uh, she loves psychedelics. <laughs> and then people start using it all over and over <laughs> and over. And then she would hear it. She's like, yes, I do love psychedelics. <laughs> it was hilarious. But obviously we didn't take any. We were just talking about that. It's a good idea. And uh, so Liar Liar, Liar, it was just showing like how he couldn't even walk through the through the route, like through this four year, yeah. not lying to people. Yeah, you crazy, know? right? It's like, how are you doing? Great. <laughs> That's the thing. And like, this is what how I s- many lies? Like... Yeah, and this is what I struggled with the uh, Canadian culture when I moved mm. to Canada, when people would say, hey, how are you? And mm-hmm. that's just the greeting. Yeah. And I go straight away, whoa, yeah, I'm doing well, pretty I'm good. I'm having I'll a rough day today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and as soon as I'm in depth about it, you just realize the person is not there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just a greeting. Shockingly, people sometimes don't want to know. Exactly. You, know? you can give them the full rundown. Oh, and that is the, there's type of people who give you this kind of very personal information mm. and you just met them. Yeah. And that's even though I'm kind of fine with those things, but I'm like, listen, I don't want to know this. Yeah. You, and you yeah. like, when someone says too much information, when I talk about like, yeah. you know, anal sex or something like yeah. that, oh, no, it's too much information or like farted or something. But when I think it's too much information, when someone I just met says that their father died two days yeah. ago, yeah. I'm like, you should not be pu- putting that on people you just met. Mm. Just an idea. Um, yeah. But I think if that's very, very present in your head at the moment, you know, it's like people can relate to that and makes you more But vulnerable. But not when you're just grabbing a coffee and like, hey, what's up? What yeah. was that? Oh, my dad passed away two days ago. Fair enough. Like you don't have to say I'm great. Maybe, maybe not exactly like that, but yeah. that's how it felt a couple of times. Okay. okay the third book, topic. third film, <laughs> Inside Out. Inside Out. Disney. Also, the, the, what's the name of the character, the happy character? Joy. That's you. <laughs> that is so you and I would be the one with the fire going out of his the head anger, the anger uh, anger what do we have fear like joy fear anger disgust disgust and uh, fear did you say fear. Fe- oh you said fear 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 joy oh, that's anger right. disgust, disgust four there were the four guys four? I oh think I so. thought it was five. Oh yeah it's true it's four and uh, disgust anger fear happiness sadness obviously sadness Sadness. There are five. Sadness is blue, and like sadness and joy are like the main characters. Oh, di- disgu- but who was disgust then? Disgust is the green one. No, it's. Oh, here you go. Yeah, there are anger five. Is blue. Yeah. Uh, red. Fear is blue. No, fear is. Fear uh, is this was skinny guy. Yeah. Uh, disgust. Sadness. Oh, this is disgust. Sadness is this. Sadness is blue. So disgust is green because it's the color <laughs> of puke. <laughs> Why? Ha! Why does Joy have blue hair though? <laughs> yeah, it's a combination of everything. I think you see green, green. Oh, uh, yeah. No red though. No red. No mm. anger at all, and no fear. So it's mm. <laughs> Joy is a combination of mm. fear and disgust. <laughs> see, no. disgust is also wearing fear, and then um, fear is wearing like a red tie, which is anger. Mm. Ooh, this is deep interpretation maybe of they don't how have, they're... Maybe they just like thought it was good colors. <laughs> I, I look up the, the deeper meaning of it. But right on the, on the bat, I think it was just such a good idea of put, putting this the, the concept of how we f- uh, fight with these certain feelings in our yeah. head and then we can name all yeah. of these feelings. Like, yeah, that is the yeah. joy, that is the, the anger. Like yeah. sometimes the anger takes over and yeah. literally they have this like these kind control of a system. control system yeah. and anger just comes yeah. in and goes full yeah. on. Basically, to give a quick background to everyone who has not watched this movie, mm. like Inside Out is a movie about uh, the emotions in our brain and how they're sitting in this like little control center. It looks mm-hmm. like a space center. And there's portraying, like they're seeing the world and whatever we see through our eyes. They see us kind of like through this big 
um, like spaceship window. Window, yeah. Um, and then uh, whoever with whatever emotion is taking over the lead is like having control of like the control stick and mm. like guiding the emotions, guiding the reactions. And then sometimes one emotion kicks in. It's like make some space for me. Like I'm gonna take over. This is disgust. Like we see spinach coming to our mouth. Like spit it out, spit it out. And then uh, green is gonna take over. And then red goes angry. And it's a fantastic movie. And I think the core message, which I perceived is like all emotions are relevant. Mm. Like we need all emotions in our life. And especially like sadness and joy are correlated. Like we need to have one to feel the other one too. It's like if you're always, always happy. Um, then you're on drugs. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> dude, dude. Um, not, but then even then you probably have some calm downs because they don't last. Forever it depends what ever. kind of drugs. <laughs> um, my favorite drug is high on life <laughs> and that lasts a long time because <laughs> that was happening in Gilly yes. <laughs> you, Nini was just like laughing and dancing laughing and dancing and this guy comes over and he asks like so what are you on is it acid or what is this <laughs> and then he's like oh I'm just on my uh, like happy on my life high on life high on life and I was just right there as well and then two seconds later he comes back no 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 seriously what are you on <laughs> and I was like <laughs> dude I dude she's high on life <laughs> and he's like oh okay these guys are assholes <laughs> 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 They're not, they don't want to share with what they have <laughs> they don't want to so sell funny. me some of their high on life drug um, but yeah, like you have to feel one emotion to go hand in hand with each other. And like, sometimes like a sad memory can turn into a joyful experience. Cause let's say you lose a loved one and then this grieving in community brings you together and you feel like more connected mm. to the people around you or like, um, you know, sometimes like a biggest, um, low moments in life can actually lead to something absolutely amazing because we generate so much strength from not wanting to feel this feeling again. So we're doing everything to avoid like uh, these negative uh, feelings to attract more and create more positive, uh, pleasurable experiences. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think it's a fantastic movie. Sometimes I do see myself having this little emotions taking oh, yeah. over. Luckily, there's not so much anger. <laughs> but I think we all experience this like fear sometimes is like, am I, you know, when you when I have like a workshop on or something, it was like, I hope, you know, um, people are going to like it. And, and at the speed na a dating event, I was like, I hope someone's going to show up. And, you know, like some people are leaving with a date tonight. And it's important to feel all the feelings. And, you know, just yeah, that's, yeah. that makes life worth living. And definitely just for us to appreciate the good stuff, we need yeah. the bad stuff. Yeah. And then, and also, like we recently talked about this, what does it mean bad? What is it bad? Like it's some of the, bad some of the, yeah, exactly. Objective. Some of the worst experiences what I had, like what well, we could call them failure, mm. and they have a negative connotation, saying like, well, if you fail, that's really bad. Mm. Anytime we fail, we learn. Yep. We learn it's to never make failure, the things different. Yeah, and we, yep. and that is so crucial and so important. And I think one of the greatest ways to compare it is with a, a little toddler learning how to walk. Yeah. You know, yeah. if that toddler not going to try walk and then fall and walk and fall mm. and fall. And I if that toddler is just going to give up, yeah. well, we know that he or she is not going to give up and yeah. continue until they walk. Yeah. Then so then all we need to do is just continue and we sometimes we're going to fall and we're going to learn. Yeah. Boom. Magic is like getting Boom, up one shaka. more time and you fell down. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. And you learn all this stuff. And then also about this film, Inside Out, that was interesting to see that how they were comparing. So this was a little girl's, uh, you know, CEO or headquarters. Yeah. But then it was like mom's headquarters. Yeah. It was dad's headquarters. Yeah. And dad's headquarters, everyone was with mustache yeah. and stuff. It, it just, just shows you we're all going through something. You know, exactly. we all have these five emotions in our, in our head. And um, adding to that, which I really like, is that um, it also says that we have like different personality islands in our brain. And that's actually how I visualized my the inside of my brain before I even watched that movie. Mm. It's like different bubbles and they just represent it as like different islands. So one is like... I'm the an island boy. <laughs> boy. <laughs> like one is the family island that, you know, it's mm. like... Um, it's in the name. Those the, the island. pillars, like what I was saying about yeah. the pillars, the family, the yeah. emotions, the yeah. And then it was like this girl is like facing like moving, moving cities and like uh, you know approaching puberty and stuff. So eventually, like all of her personality islands collapse, mm. and she's just like 
fatten and like nothing makes sense and she's angry and like has all this like mixed emotions and um, basically needs to build up new personality mm. islands like needs to find a new group of friends like what we call growth basically growth and new yeah. hobbies and stuff so i think it's this movie is it's like a, like a simple disney movie but there's such a deep deep message that sometimes we think like everything is falling apart but that actually just gives space for like um creating new things yeah. and to 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 make space to let go of the old to come up with the new and then we face emotions that are not always like super pleasant and nowadays we're so happy with cartoons especially yeah. like they're so good actually one of yeah. my one of my late uh, guests was um this fighter anthony who's one of his favorite was zooland uh, uh zootropia yeah zootropolis zootropolis <laughs> it's basically about these animals who live together yeah. and they're all different yeah. and which really represents like we human beings and we yeah. talked about like the personality types yeah. someone is going to be sloth yeah. someone is going to be a, a rabbit someone is going to be a wolf yeah. and then like how they were saying that uh carnivores would you know uh, the, the predators would yeah. try to eat the rabbit and stuff like that but they have to somehow figure out how to live together yeah. and and when he when we were talking about it I, i loved it from animation perspective all the like the 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 uh, humor perspective of humor but it's such a great message at the end mm -hmm. and and comparing what cartoons we had as a kids it was not much mm -hmm. message it was like tom mm -hmm. and jerry if someone runs and hits each other yeah, and kind of fair thing enough. it's not so much fun fact i once read that in alice in wonderland mm. every character represents a different drug trip <laughs> oh wow so i think the rabbit is on speed because he's always like pointing oh, at the clock like, we gotta hurry up we gotta hurry up alice is on a like massive lsd trip like she's in wonderland she just and, like, sees shit all the time yep. the other one is smoking like what is that morphium or something Was it oh, the cat? Crack. Was the like cat? Like the caterpillar? It was like oh, smoking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was actually smoking as well. Smoking. Uh, like maybe maybe it's weed or whatever. But like basically everyone represents a different Yeah. Trip. What was the cat's name? I'm Very specific. With like with that huge names. smile. He was there always sitting. They call him something cat. Something cat. Um, <laughs> Kitty cat. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> and um yeah no it's uh it's interesting also there was a uh, recently i saw something how um uh, like certain uh fairy tales what we have they're so international mm -hmm. so like the uh oh, yeah, the snow white them. the yeah. snow white and the the beauty and the beast and then so they adjust to certain countries yeah. the way they want to do it yeah. germans apparently did the craziest yeah. job because each of those fairy tales what they want to portray is that the kids would be afraid yeah so they make them scared of like yeah. the dark scared of this and that yeah. and it was just like interesting to watch and, yeah. and uh, I, it, for me it was very different because i grew up with a lot of russian cartoons yeah. and stuff and like <laughs> i did see a russian <laughs> yeah, version i'm holding myself right yeah <laughs> russian version of like uh snow white and all that and to see the disney version yeah. of it like when the snow white with the seven dwarfs right uh, 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 yeah is it snow white yeah. yeah and then uh russian version was so so different like yeah. those dwarfs looked not cool at all <laughs> they were like evil or whatever <laughs> and then the uh, disney version was like all jolly and, yeah. and happy and stuff okay we need to move on to okay. next thank thing. you for everyone who's still on <laughs> Yay. I don't know, we're like four hours in it's okay like And then we have people. People. Yeah, so your dad, I we already people. covered a lot about your dad. Yes. It's one of your main people. Yes. Uh, Daddy, Daddy Fritz. What is his first name? Steffen. 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 Does he has a, uh, a nickname, Steffi? No? No. <laughs> he actually doesn't have a nickname, Fritza. Fritza. Yeah. Mm. But I, I only know one person who's calling him Fritza. Um, yeah. I think... Uh, The world needs more people like, like Daddy Fred. Yeah, he's That's just cool. an I, I actually I would be very excited to meet him one day. He's like this bubble of radiant like joy and enthusiasm and like It's like a, it's like a fullest. male version a little bit older Nini. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> But yeah, just with like more life experience yeah. and uh, yeah, just as like example that I always say like adulthood doesn't have to suck. Mm. Like in, when no. you, when you're a kid you think like a lot of like grown-ups are just like bitter and desperate and like he's just showing me that it's it can be super cool to like care less about what other people think to actually you know build up um so much like ex ex success achievements and like obviously also if you're good in what you're doing it comes with like the monetary outcome that you can actually like um afford things that you 
enjoy doing is like buy the car you've always wanted, but mm-hmm. not because you want to brag and be like, ooh, no, you know. Because you want to enjoy going to cool trips and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. It's because you're like, shit, I freaking worked for it and I earned it and like I'm having fun, like by driving like a speedy car or whatever, like really showing me how important it is that it always comes from this intrinsic motivation. And like I try to convince that I don't have middle age crisis. <laughs> no, like he's, like he's making fun of that. <laughs> but um, yeah, like... Um, and who's to say what is wrong with the mi- middle age crisis or what is middle age crisis? Yeah. That's again one of those things that we have from the past and they <laughs> just kind of, yeah, yeah, like you're trying to get a, 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 like a young girlfriend. Yeah. What is wrong with that? Like nothing wrong is more like testing your market value. You know, when you feel like you used to be the guy who goes in a club and girls are like, oh, my God, yeah. he's so handsome. And then suddenly you're like 50 and realize like you're the creepy old guy that girls <laughs> run away from. And it's like this old dude just, just hit on know me. Their value. <laughs> I think that's like a, an identity crisis. And I think the middle, I mean, I'm luckily still a few decades away from that. But I think the, the actual crisis is having your identity crisis mm. if you base your identity on like external things it's yeah, like on your looks 100%. on your money whatever and then you're like shit this can all fade so you're like kind of trying to grab and hold on to that but if yeah. you realize like it's about who you are and not what you have mm. i think that's that's a great one because um when I when I did certain again in twenty years, yeah, <laughs> certain things in my life when I was doing like yeah. na- now, very often people, oh, you that you the yeah. stunt guy, you the stunt man, you the mm-hmm. actor, you the stunt man, mm-hmm. and then like now, so when I do start doing stand up comedy and yeah. stuff like that, now people, oh, you the funny guy, yeah. you this guy, yeah, and I'm like the funny stunt I'm man. I'm like <laughs> all of that, but yeah. I don't want to identify myself with yeah. any of that. Yeah, I'm just Renars who's yeah. like doing his thing, yeah, and I enjoy just versatility of thing. Yeah, so. Like sometimes, some, yeah. Sometimes I get annoyed when I, s- yeah. I actually I don't want to tell them that I I work as a stunt performer because yeah. was oh my god, tell me what films you work. Yeah. I just want to s- more than that. Just yeah. I want to say like oh I'm something. But no, I also kind of want them to leave me alone. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just a marketing guy, do sales. Yeah. Oh, and then just oh fuck it. But yeah. I did it yeah. in one one event. I was like I felt so cool. Like no yeah. one was asking me any questions. Yeah. As soon as you say stuntman, oh what films did you do? Yeah. Did I any? Uh, do I know any of that? Yeah. Yeah, that stuff. So that's your dad. Yeah. And then we have Jay Shetty. Shetty, you yeah. know, do you know him? No, I did not have time to look it up because that pa- the, piece the, of paper got sent to me in last <laughs> so like whatever hours. <laughs> message in a bottle. When, when did it get sent to you? No, it was actually yesterday, okay. but it was I was busy yesterday. Okay, fair enough. Ubud making Ubudians oh, yeah. laugh. Okay, Ubudi and Wubu. Yeah. <laughs> woo Talking about Jay Shetty, which is a good bridge to Wubu stuff because... Um, He's this like uh, English guy with like Indian roots who was studying business and was very good at it and had all these like internships at like big five companies and then actually had a, a guest lecture in his London business school um, by a monk. Oh. And uh, he actually figured out that and that was the thing that was really captivating for him is like how can someone who had everything you know this monk used to like have like a high corporate job and blah give that up for having nothing when i come to like business school having nothing wanting to do anything so and obviously most of the guest speakers they were the same they were like you know higher faster um wider whatever um so he got really fascinated by that it's like what is that special something that triggers someone to give all of that up for having nothing so he spent his semester breaks like partially doing these crazy internships and the other half uh, he went to this monastery in um, in India and or ashram um, and lived with the monks. So he was getting up at like 4 a.m. to meditate for, I don't know, 10 hours a day and like shaving his head, walking up and walking around in his robe um, and yeah, just living the monk life. And um, then when he came back, he was... I think certified as a monk or however you call it. Um, but then he realized like um, he's not business guy, but he's also not 100% monk. Um, so he was just um, creating this thing called basically edutainment where he's blending the best of both worlds together. And he's like, um, you know, how um, also implementing this ikigai principle, like how can you find out your, your purpose mm. and find a way to like monetize it. And that's just like one of the, <laughs> the mic. Um, that's just one of the themes to blend in like this scientific research of what makes humans humans tick and like why do we act the way we act and like what drives us 
connected to this like spiritual world and like how we can implement practices to like come down to like the source of who we are and like again um like authentically relating connecting mm. with other people and through that like blending the best of both worlds together and he's doing that in such an inspiring way and like such a captivating way where I'm obsessed with his podcast as well. It's called On Purpose. Oh, okay. Um, Let's check it out. And yeah, you cannot not be present. Whenever you hear him talking, he's got such a, th- a soothing voice and blending in like this, you know, like education, like really like scientific based research. Mm. Um, but then with actual valuable uh, woo woo stuff that it's like hand on, hands on practice. Um, so I was considering to to add the add his book to the books, but then I'm like, nah, I'd rather choose him as a person. Um, but the book is called Think Like a Monk, and that's probably also one of the best books I've ever read. So yeah, Think Like a Monk. I just realized another camera died. <laughs> okay, let's say just two minutes break, and then we're gonna be back. Oh my god, and we're back. <laughs> <laughs> such a <laughs> such a child. Like just week. And uh, so now we just have one camera left, just main Final camera, but it's all... Can. We talk so much. <laughs> all good, all good. Um, yeah, I need big, bigger memory cards. I like big memory cards, I can not lie. <laughs> just never stop talking to you. Um, okay. Okay. And we were talking about Jay, Sh- Jay Shetty, and yeah. also like mentioning about the, the monks, uh, I think one of the first ever self-developing book I read was uh, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. Ferrari, yep. Yeah. Same Boom. story. <laughs> That's the one. And yeah. uh, okay, and the last person? Sebastian Terry, who is probably very well unknown, like he does, I don't know, have 10,000 something um, followers. Um, but I listened to a TED talk uh, of him, and he is like a, you know, like a, um, a g- what's the word, um, connected or, uh, yeah, another fellow bucket lister. Mm-hmm. Um, so he came up with this list of 100 things, like, you know, obviously 100 things to do before you die, um, inspired by having one of his, like, best friends passing away when he was 24, which made him, like, reconsider if, like, what is actually, like, a life truly lived. And if that would have been him, like, how would he have reflected on his life? Would, like, 24 years would have been enough if you actually do something that mm. you really enjoy doing? So, basically, then he kind of uh, created this list and um, started doing a lot of things that initially never, and no one thought it were possible, he just went out and did them, and I'd figure out that, which I also experienced when I did it, which um, I pretty much have a similar story to that, which we're going to touch base on another podcast maybe. Um, but yeah, figuring out that nothing is too big to tick off your list, like where there's a will, you always find a way to make it happen, and um, you know, maybe what's relevant to you now is now no longer relevant in five years when you change, like, your interests, your values, whatever. 100%. That changes all the time, yeah. Right? It's like I have a huge bucket list of, like, 300, 400 things that I wrote maybe four years ago. And, like, maybe some of those things, like marrying a stranger in Vegas is <laughs> something which I thought was fun when it's been 24. Just let me know when you're in Vegas. <laughs> Complete stranger. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Wrong button. <Again>. Um, <laughs> and yeah, doing all of that, and he did it. He lived in a remote island. He like um, delivered a baby. He was crashing weddings and stuff like that. I'm like, it's not about actually the things that he did, but more in terms of like, um, do whatever you put your mind to it. Like, mm. say something, f- take it, like, create an action plan, and then go out and do it. And um, then he came up with this uh, thing, which I was fortunate enough to be part of and then at least met him like on a virtual oh, thing that he was helping, like connecting other people, uh, basically connecting and taking their bucket list uh, items off. It's like, oh, I want to build a tree house for my kids in like this part of the US. And then he found someone who was like, hey, we sent like 10 volunteers who were free on Saturday send over to help you build this tree house and you know like creating little communities helping people achieve their dreams um and i actually got in touch with him to throw like a virtual surprise birthday party during the lockdown days like the first lockdown um so we surprised like my friend uh, in where was she living back then like in sweden or i think she was still in sweden yeah 
And we had like this, I don't know, a hundred strangers showing up on Zoom to like surprise her. And like also a bunch of like family and friends and throwing like a massive virtual surprise party with a bunch of people she didn't know singing that happy cool. birthday and stuff. So yeah, he's a really cool dude. Also, as I mentioned, I have a weak spot for Australian accents. And when I heard the tattoo, Shout like, out to Sebastian Terry. You! Cool, cool Inspiring dude. all the people. And I'm like, the whole concept of Bucket List is amazing. And do you remember the film Bucket List? Yeah. I yeah. actually watched that one. Yeah, like, with the Morgan Freeman and yeah. Crazy Nickel yeah. Jackman. Jackman, Crazy Man. Yeah, Jack Nicholson. Jack yeah. Nicholson, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I loved it. Uh, and that also gives you that idea what if we all just live every day like it's yeah. the last day we have and yeah. we only have a couple of days left? I st sorry to interrupt, no, but like I think... Um, you know, the I don't think we have to take this as, as like yeah. everyday value, but it's like in general, yeah. that's how we should look yeah. at life. I think um, one day, like having one day left might be like too crazy. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. It's like spending like all my money. A week like left, two weeks. <laughs> um, <laughs> a year? I, a year? Yeah, I... I once had a very interesting conversation with a woman who uh, um, was diagnosed with cancer and basically was given, I think, um, three months or nine months. I think it was three months left. Um, and she just told me that in hindsight, it's like cancer was one of the best things that could have happened to her. And by that, like not the disease, but the fact that you get given like a due date to your life. So you realize like, I don't have time for any bullshit. I am not going to invest my time and energy in like people, task or anything that doesn't add value, that doesn't make me happy and like cut that off. You know, it's like, um, who am I to like trying to impress people I don't even like from like exactly. buying things I don't need and stuff and your time is limited. You're like, what actually matters? And um, luckily, she survived. And uh, she's still, as far as she's I know... She's still kicking. She's and the craziest thing, probably, the, w the reason she survived, because her body was so happy yeah. that she was doing all those things. Yeah. And because, like, we're so connected with our feelings, with our, yeah. like, we're depressed, we're not depressed. Yeah. And that's, like, this ease. It's all about how we make our body feel. Yeah. Exactly. It's crazy. Yeah, and then you can heal yourself by... One of the ways yeah. I look at it, uh, basically, just recently, I kinda, maybe the last couple of years, I started looking at it, um, so that I was not supposed to be born. Yeah. And it's not, I'm not talking from like perspective of like, oh, there's a small chance that this yeah. sperm is gonna yeah. get to this egg. Yeah. No, my parents should not be having me because my mom, she, she had a very bad health. Yeah. And doctors said after my sister was, uh, was born, doctors said no babies. And whether they just somehow got pregnant, wasn't that planned pregnancy or not, like obviously my parents wouldn't talk about it. Yeah. But uh, that happened. Another thing what happened, my mom fell into, a, what do they call them, a, a hole in, in, in a house. You have like this, like you open like an old school hole. Yeah, yeah. Like, like uh, an attic but reverse. Yeah, there's, th th there's, basement a, thing. there's like a basement thing. And she yeah. fell with me when she was pregnant. And uh, so, yeah. Maybe that's why you're a stuntman. <laughs> no, when I was basically now, I was just saying like I was not supposed to be here. Yeah. So if I fuck it up uh, doing what I want to do, yeah, not a big deal. <laughs> that's a good way to look you at know? it. You know, and also very freeing to realize like if I don't have any right to be here, you know, I might as well make the most out of it and be like, didn't see that coming. <laughs> but the thing is, like, if we look at it, I think none of us had that right to be here. And none of us should be having some kind of a no, right no, no. I, I don't think we have to have some kind of a pressure that we are here for the certain purpose. Yeah, we all can be just a little mistake happen, and we just have to be so fucking lucky yeah. and happy that yeah. we're walking, talking, we're doing yeah. our thing. We have this amazing feeling waking up in the morning, seeing the sun coming yeah. up, and doing a stretch, and and yeah. feeling pain, and feeling happiness, and feeling all of those all things. The inside out five emotions. Pretty much, yeah. and just be yeah. grateful what we have, yeah. you know, and 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 take the the best out of it because mm. like i keep repeating it the only thing we can take with us is our experience that's true when you're about to die when some like my sister a while ago i don't know hopefully she ha have changed her perspective of life and she was and i would say like what is the purpose in life what, mm. why are we here like we had this deeper conversation she would say like well when i die it really matters to me what kind of people and who is going to be standing in my around my grave yeah. when i'm dead and i'm like even then i thought yeah. this is the stupidest thing yeah. ever who yeah. gives a fuck? You're dead. Yeah. That's Who it. Wants You're to gone. be the richest man in a graveyard anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. it's like and like if someone says you have to have kids because we have some kind of like a, a duty to have kids. No. Yeah. 
we we're gonna have kids because, because we, want we want to have that experience. Yeah. What does it mean to be a mom? Yeah. What does it mean to be a dad? And that you know that you guide someone and you wake up and 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 your son is I don't know done something and you yeah. deal with this problem. How you deal with it yeah. or with your daughter and like your dad is just so happy to see you guys doing your thing and yeah. and then and then looking that whatever guidance he gave to you, like you taking that on the board yeah. and you like continuing it. Yeah. Batteries are dying. We're out of films. We're <laughs> out of memory because we've been whacking here for <laughs> ages. <laughs> memory is going to stay forever. Last Collect thing, memories, you not have two, things. You have two minutes. Oh, my God. Yeah. What, to t- what I'm going to talk about. this segment called the, wi- the, 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 the Bombs of Wisdom. Oh, wow. Give me the bomb of wisdom. Oh, my God. No pressure, Nini. <laughs> I'm just going to check if that camera still works. Yep. After talking for like four hours, <laughs> you want to squeeze the leftover yeah, juice out of my over. brain. Um, okay. What wisdom can I... I feel like a bit like Toastmasters. No, no, no. Basically, the idea is that uh, you, what okay. would you tell to younger Nini? who was like 10 years old, maybe 15 years old. That's one way to look at it. Or other way to look at it is like, what would you say to someone who is younger, who is like thinking about entrepreneurship, about traveling, yeah. about and they're afraid of those things. What yeah. would you tell them? This is so funny you asked me that because yesterday... I'm so funny. On my me time day, you are. <laughs> um, I, I tell you, I played I Connect with myself and one question I pulled out was like, which advice would you give to yourself like 10 years ago? So I basically yesterday evening, I kid you not, I wrote a letter to 18-year-old Nini and be like, listen up, this is 20-year-old Nini talking to you like, you know, and this is giving like all the advices that I had. Um, one of them was definitely take that plane to Bali. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think um, a bunch of things that I've already mentioned earlier, but it's okay to live a life that other people don't understand. You know, it's like uh, we're so prone to live up with, to grow up with this idea of this society escalator, how I like to call it. It's like you finish high school, like you go study, you add another master's degree, and you go work for like one. <laughs> That's the best Good sound one. for it. <laughs> um, then you like ideally spend all your summer breaks, like doing internships at uh, crazy co- uh, companies. Uh, and then you get a job, climb up the corporate ladder, Marry a high school sweetheart, uh, move in together, have, you know, buy a house, cr- ma- make a family, which I do believe is beautiful, again, if it comes from intrinsic motivation. But I feel like we're ticking off this success list in life. Like uh, Heath Ledger said that once, so it's like ticking off a grocery shopping list. Mm. It's like once you ticked all of these boxes, then you're a successful person. And then people are going to look at you as like, yep, you made it. But... I can imagine that a person sleeping in a tent traveling the world feels so much happier and so much more intrinsically fulfilled by not ticking off that box. I but don't how crazy is that for some people that's a bucket list? It, it is, but it's perfectly fine. I have a friend who's, um, you know, like she tried it out traveling for two weeks. It was not her thing. She went back home, like got pregnant, got engaged, and she doesn't have any FOMO of thinking like what would have mm. happened. And I totally respect that, like, our lifestyle is not everyone's cup of tea. And I don't expect everyone to, like, want to move to, like, a different country and a different continent where they don't speak your language, you're far away from your family. Like, it's not everyone's thing, but, like, really live a life that makes you happy. Like, Mm. I, and I said that since I'm 20 years old, that I could die any day. And I would can tell myself I truly lived my life up You've to the fullest. It. And like until that age, obviously the, the list is long. There's so many things I still want to experience and try and do. But don't postpone all your goals and dreams to someday maybe. Because we never know when we get this get this like given due date that we all have. Exactly. Like no one gets out here alive anyway. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, like live it up to the fullest, do more things that make you happy, like try out things like take risks dare to leave your comfort zone um yeah do drugs (laughs) a lot of drugs take drugs 
Like I would I wouldn't <laughs> recommend drugs, but I think everyone should at least do once in a lifetime do magic mushrooms in a safe environment. In a safe environment. With people you can trust. It's like um Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah like <laughs> be safe, um do it from the right motivation, but and the I balance. think it's a great way to expand your consciousness. I think the balance is very important. <laughs> <laughs> once a day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nini, that's it. We're done. It's been like so long thank you but it, this is amazing i mean like i'm stretching you out because the camera is dying all that stuff give me a hallelujah on instagram whatever if you made it until this point and you're still here i know that anyone who's watched it until there here, should be like a code word like hallelujah yeah. three two one yes so <laughs> everyone who watched until here send a renars and me a hallelujah three two one there you go that's it we are done Woo, boom Pooh. don't set don't I take the headphones off food. We're gonna we're gonna do a little selfie before we do because okay. I always forget this. Okay, we're done. Food, food, food. Every, every moment spent with, with you is a moment I treasure. Oh, yeah. I don't, don't wanna close my eyes. I don't wanna fall asleep because I miss you, baby, and I don't wanna miss a thing.